A&M. So if they win today, they will be in great shape. However, they still have to take care of their business at the end because Prairie View A&M owns the tiebreaker if they're tied at the end of the season because they beat them earlier. And, of course, in the east, it's all Florida A&M. They've already clinched, so they're just waiting waiting around That's to right. see they're who's going to play. Yes. They're, yeah, they're waiting to see who, who they'll be rattling on, right? No <laughs> doubt about that. Let's talk about some players you need to keep your eye on for this afternoon. And for the Braves from Alcorn State, it would be Jarvion Howard. He was the leading rusher in the SWAC last year. This year comes in as the fourth leading rusher in the SWAC. But you can see the muscles there. This is a hard-nosed, tough runner. I'm scared from up here. I can tell you that right now. I don't want any part of him. He he can certainly get it done. Five TDs on the season. Averages 5.5 a carry. And he's disappointed in what he's doing. So you know he's going to run an explosive game today. And the Tigers from Texas Southern. Well, they've been in almost every game thanks to this young man, Ladarius Owens. He only needs 176 yards to become the all-time leading rusher in the school's history. Uh, and that's special. No, no question about that. Over 1,000 yards already. He averages six. Point nine a carry. That's why he's the leading rusher in the SWAC. He gets it done in all different types of ways, power and some great agility. Alcorn State has won the toss today, and they have elected to defer, so the TSU Tigers will have the opportunity to go on offense first. There's the head coach of the Braves, Mr. Fred McNair, entering his eighth season this year. Of course, he has four SWAC titles under his belt, two SWAC titles, also four Eastern Division championships. All he does is win. Of course, he's the original heir, McNair. And on the other side, Clarence McKinney. A young man who grew up right across the street from Texas Southern University, entering his fifth season as head coach of the Tigers. His team has been in some games this year. They've played some close games, just have not come out on the right side of those. Yeah, no, they, and they've been getting better and better. And they're, I'll tell you, the offense has really been very dynamic. they got some players making things go. And, of course, you know, as we talk a little bit, Ladarius Owens is the engine that helps make that whole thing happen when that run game's explosive. And, you know, I have to mention to Corey Howard as well because he's the hammer <laughs> when he comes in there and runs as well. Texas Southern overall 2-7, and 1-5 and five in swag play. Alcorn 6-3 and three overall, but the Braves come in at 5-1. and one, And as Jorge said at the top of the broadcast, they now control their own destiny as far as winning the West Championship. No Keani and SWAC football is underway at Shell Energy Stadium. Here comes Owens with the football. Spins away from one guy and is going to be dropped at the 27-yard line. And that is where the Tigers from TSU will go on offense first. And that will give us our first look at Jace Wilson. And there you see a little more about Ladarius Owens. So far, he's gotten over 1,000 yards this year. But he's 176 shy of becoming the all-time rusher at Texas Southern. That would be quite an accomplishment during his career. Oh, you bet. He would love to get that today. No question about it. Uh, why wait when you can get it now, right? <laughs> so that brings us to Jace Wilson. Of course, he became the starting quarterback when Andrew Body decided to take a redshirt year with an injured shoulder. So first and 10 for TSU and Wilson. And he hands it to Owens to start the series off. And Owens is going to make a big pickup on first down. Call it a gain of about five. That run really showcased a couple things from Howard. You watch him. I mean, he's got great vision. As soon as he gets the ball, he's got great vision, cuts, made a couple of uh, uh, play that could have been negative, positive. Second and five on the field. We'll get to our impact players from GM in just a second, but we're going to get this play off here. And he hands it inside, and a big play by the Alcorn State defense. No gain on the play. Maybe a loss of one. Let's check out those impact players brought to you by GM. Yeah, it starts with quarterback Aaron Allen for uh, Alcorn. Uh, he is 66% uh, effective passing the ball. He's certainly a very accurate. Keenan Leachman, who had an amazing, amazing game yesterday, or last weekend, uh, just changing the course of that game. And then Jace Wilson, as you mentioned, the quarterback for TSU. And Jacob Williams, attacking machine, tackling machine for the Tigers. So that's Jace Wilson right there with a pass for a first down to Ian Means. So the Tigers with a big third, third down there, third and long, and they convert for the first down. Ian Means making the catch, the 6'3", 180-pounder from Houston, went to North Shore High School. So first and 10 for the Tigers. Wilson to throw again, underneath to Means again. This time he's going to be caught and dropped by number 25, Edwin Summerhour, who comes up quickly to make the stop. 
It's kind of interesting where they spotted that. They really, I thought he had a few more yards than that because he was going backwards, but uh, good catch, and he's a physical runner. So second and eight now after a gain of about two on that pass play. Our referee for the day, Jarvis Walker. You saw him spotting the football. Wilson's going to swing it out to Owens. Owens around the corner. He's still on his feet. And Owens is going to pick up. Call it a four-yard gain there. It's going to bring up a third and five. Good hustle by Malachi Bailey getting way out there to drop Owens. I was going to say Bailey really saved a huge play because Owens uh, could have been shorted on the play, but he made a great move, and that was about to be huge. Uh, so great job on the league. Tigers going quickly on offense. They put Leary in motion. He gets set on the right side to Wilson's right. Wilson looking that way. Bumps into his own running back. Now he has to scramble out of the pocket. That might be a fumble. Ball is down, and let's see. Wilson got it back. But that almost was just a disaster to start the game for Texas Southern University. You know, Jace right here, once he decided to pull it down and run, he just needs to run. And again, I mean, <laughs> he needed to explode because <laughs> the Braves were on his tail right there for sure. But they're very lucky they didn't turn the ball over, you know, and they certainly have to hang on to the ball. They can't afford to give. Uh, the ball away, especially in great field position for the Braves. They're lucky to punt here. Patrick Helen back in as the starting punter for TSU. He's been dealing with an injury, but he's back today, and he gets the kick away. Akeem McNair calls for the fair catch, and he makes it at about the 26-yard line. And that is where Alcorn will go on offense for the first time. We'll take a look at the Braves when we come back. Stick around. No score in the first quarter. Welcome back to Shell Energy Stadium, everyone. Butch Alcindor along with Jorge Vargas. No score between the Alcorn State Braves and the Texas Southern Tigers. If you're just joining us, Texas Southern got the football first, and they would punt it away. A 35-yard punt by Patrick Helen, And now Alcorn State will get their first bite of the apple with Aaron Allen at quarterback for the Braves. Allen's going to throw it, and it's almost intercepted by Jacob Williams. He had nothing but the goal line in front of him, and he couldn't hang on to that football. A great Ooh. read by Williams, and he was looking at six points right off the bat. Oh, my gosh. He was he was working on his uh, celebration dance. Look at that. Great break on the ball. He did a great job reading it. And, uh, you know, I guarantee his coach is going to say, son, that's why you're a linebacker. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, Jacob Williams has returned a fumble, 95 yards, so he does. He's handled the ball before. That's just unfortunate for the TSU Tigers. So second and 10 for the Braves, and Jarvion Howard is met in the backfield, and he is stopped. A big hit by the Tigers up front. Javius Williams looks like a big tackle there. He came flying off into there and got him right at the legs before he could get churning. And that's really how you have to stop him once he gets coming. Look at his muscles. You can see the cuts on his arm from way up here in the booth. Third and 11 coming up for the Braves. Of course, the quarterback, Aaron Allen. He's a Houston native, grew up in Missouri City, went to Ridge Point High School before he went on to Louisiana Tech and then transferred on to Alcorn State, facing a big third down here. And he will throw it. Allen fires, completes his pass. It's going to be shorter the first down by about a yard and a half. Completes to the big tight end, Tavarius Griffin. Of course, his teammates like to call him Truck. And you take one look at him, you understand why. <laughs> he has definitely trucked a lot of people. But here comes the punting unit now coming on for the Braves. That will bring on Caleb Darbone. Yeah, and I like the play call there. Griffin, I mean, you, you throw it to your big truck <laughs> of a tight end there, right? Uh, trying to get him to uh, uh, move forward. He was only a yard short or a couple yards short. So I uh, like the play call. Just couldn't quite get the first down for the Braves. And now the Tigers will get the ball back. Actually, it's Kenny Lee Pham back to punt the football away. He hits it high, end over end, and it's fair caught by the TSU Tigers. They will have the ball on the 34-yard line. So they will end up with good field position after that turn. But, boy, what a change of events and a, a big break for Alcorn State that Jacob Williams did not intercept that football. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, they, they were breathing out. They were probably <laughs> probably messed up their play calling after that. They wanted to be very conservative to make sure they didn't turn anything over. Um, I will say Trenton Leary, who's returning, the punt returner, he, he's something special. Keys of the game for uh, Texas Southern, presented by GM. Run, run, run. Get your run rolling. A penalty, penalty you got to minimize that, and you got to win the turnover battle. Those are the big keys for them today. they got to make it happen. Keys to the game brought to you by GM. Tigers with the football now. First and 10 from their 33-yard line. They put Owens in motion. Wilson going deep. Has a man and he hits him in stride. It's Leary. And Leary's going to take it all the way for the touchdown for Texas Southern University. Make it a 68-yard touchdown pass unofficially. Wilson to Leary on the touchdown. Trenton Leary. What a pass. That was absolutely perfect timing. Put it right there in stride. And, and I was just talking about Leary being pretty dangerous as a punt returner. Well, just let him loose down the sidelines and throw in the ball. That's a little bit easier, huh? He just got by the defender, and it was off to the races, and he was not going to be denied. Ernest Wood, the, the third there, on the coverage. He just got by him, and it's touchdown. <laughs> and last week, Wilson... Missed a couple of those. The extra point is good. But remember, last week, Wilson had a couple of guys in the secondary open for touchdowns, and he was a little too strong. That time, put it right on the money. Yeah, exactly. He had some accuracy problems, especially in the first half. You're absolutely right. But, boy, to start the game off with a perfect strike like that, that increases the confidence of the Tigers. And certainly, Wilson now can, can start to feel it, and it also allows his coaches to go and say, yeah, we're going to go deep. We're going to go ahead and stretch this field. And, of course, Alcorn now has got to make sure that they, they do big strikes, almost an interception, pick six, and now you gave up a big, big play. That's going to be called a one-play drive. It's going to be down 67 yards officially. Jace Wilson over to Trenton Leary for the touchdown. And, of course, Leary and Austin native went to LBJ High School. And uh, he's averaging 13.9 a catch. That's going to really help that average right there. I think it will stretch it out a little bit, won't it? But I'll tell you, what's better than a one-play drive, right? <laughs> Throw the ball, touchdown, we're good. 67 yards, man. Yeah, you, you can't beat that. One play, 67 yards. Took him 11 seconds to cover the 67 yards. <laughs> So, Texas Southern, that's one of the things you talked about in your keys, that they had to get off to a good start. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and, and all four, and I don't think we got to that, they have to stop the big play. Well, really, they avoided a pick six, and then now they just let up on a, on a uh, big, big play. Uh, that the, changed the game in seconds. The offensive coordinator for Texas Southern, David Marsh, he likes to script plays also as we have the kickoff here. Going down to the Braves is going to be fielded at about the 10-yard line. And here comes Akeem McNair, the coach's son, on the return. And he gets it up to about the 30-yard line. But David Marsh normally likes to 
script his plays, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But first, the Alcorn Keys brought to you by GM. Yeah, and I mentioned just a minute ago, uh, contain the Tigers' run, so you got to make them one way. Uh, stay unpredictable offensively. Keep their balance that the Braves have. They're really, and minimize TSU big plays, and that's what I was talking about a second ago, is the big plays uh, of TSU they can't allow because they don't want TSU to start get roaring and get rolling. So already they've given up one big play, almost two in the pick six. Keys to the game brought to you by GM. As we were saying, for wrap up the TSU thought, David Marsh likes to script his plays. That 67-yard touchdown may have been part of the script. <laughs> That's his best writing. <laughs> Alcorn going to the run and nothing happening there. TSU with a quick reaction inside. It's going to be back to the line of scrimmage. He's going to keep that script. Yeah. <laughs> I like this one. It worked pretty well. Of course, Alcorn leads the series overall, 34 wins, 21 losses, and just four ties in this series. Well, quite honestly, we've done a few games, yeah. right? And we've seen Leary just become more dangerous and more dangerous throughout uh, uh, watching them play. So uh, he certainly showed how dangerous he is there. And he had to. You know, Derek Morton is out probably for the remainder of the season. A.J. Bennett is out, and he's had to step up, and he's done a great job. So second down for the Braves, and it's Allen. Rolling to his right, looking downfield. He had McNair, but he's a little too long. It's a little too strong on the throw. He was trying to hit Hakeem McNair, who did have a step. Yeah, no. He, he, uh, and actually, he, he had some more time to take his time and throw that ball. Uh, but he threw it on the run. And again, it shows his arm strength. I mean, you see how far that ball stayed real easy? He was striding long, but he just cranked that ball up. He's got it good. That's one of the things uh, Coach told us this week. He said... His passing is definitely his strength. He's a very accurate passer, but he said he's a willing runner. He will run when he has to. So third down now, third and ten coming up for the Braves. Aaron Allen in the pocket. Now he steps up under some pressure, still alive, fires, and he completes his pass near the sidelines. A nice catch over there by number five, Nico Duffy. And let's see where they put it down. He got close to the sticks, and, and it's it going to be a first down for Alcorn State. Yeah, and that replay you saw, number 24, Javis Williams, get off of the receiver to go try to, uh, you know, sack that quarterback. And when he did that, opened up the receiver and uh, gave him some room. Javis Williams. So a big first down for the Braves. And they go back to Duffy inside. Duffy's going to pick up two or three before he's wrestled to the ground. Elinus Noel, big fellow, has been playing very well for the Texas Southern Tigers on that defensive front. Yeah, speaking of that front, Elias Noel and, and uh, Pippins, I think those two guys, Ramontes Pippins, they are huge in this game. If they can keep things strong on the run game, it'll be huge for the Tigers. By the way, Aaron Allen is the SWAC Offensive Player of the Week for his performance last week. Young man played a great game against Southern University. So Allen to throw it again. Has to roll out to his right. Now he's going to keep it. Now spins away. Gets away from one would-be tackler. Got away from Williams. Got close to the first down. But there was a flag dropped in the backfield. So that one might be coming back. Yeah, I think I was on to Marcus Gordon. Uh, holding Pippins. We just talked about Pippins and uh, he, didn't, he didn't want Pippins to get rolling, so he gave him a nice little friendly uh, hug. Let's call it. <laughs> As you see Fred McNair on the sideline there, brother Steve. Fred also played at Alcorn State. Had a lot of success with the Braves as a coach. I mentioned on the top, he was the original Air McNair and then Steve became Air McNair. <laughs> Air Plus is what they call it nowadays. <laughs> so call it second in about uh, almost 20 yards after the penalty was marked off. And here comes Jarvion Howard with a nice piece of that coming back. Javius Williams, one of the Tigers on the stop. That, that run just looked angry. Watch it. He just takes off and he is just mad. I mean, I'd hate to bend in front of him right there at that point because you know you were going to get unloaded on that is brave right there, getting in front of the brave. Yeah, coach <laughs> called him a hard-nosed runner, but, boy, we saw a little sample of that right there. You know, he said during the offseason he's made his pass blocking 
one of his priorities. He was trying to get better at protecting the quarterback. And so here comes Alcorn now with a third down and about 10 after that pickup. You got Allen scrambling out to his right again. Still looking downfield under pressure, and he just has to unload. He had to throw that one away because Isaiah Bogarty was breathing right down on him at that time. He didn't have a chance. And what Bogarty did a great job of, at first that corner looked alive, and you thought he was going to run around that corner. What he did, instead of going up the field at first, he went horizontal, which made him have to go back, and then he just chased him. So actually there was one move there where he could have gone up, created a seam on that outside. Instead, he went horizontal towards the sideline, made him go back, and then they all chased him. He had to get rid of the ball. So the Braves getting set for their second punt in the ball game. TSU has a return on, but it's going to be a short kick. Leary's chasing it. He might pick it up, and he does. And Trenton Leary trying to catch the Braves napping, but good coverage by the Braves. So TSU will have the football when we come back. We're going to pause for a timeout. 7 nothing here at Shell Energy Stadium. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the falling hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors. Honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Doritos created Solid Black in 2021 to help fuel the initiatives of black leaders seeking to drive real change. And this year, Doritos Solid Black is welcoming 16 new change makers to the program. We are Solid Black. Huge play coming up. Oh, Talking about dropping the ball. I got the score. Tostitos Hardy Dippers. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the falling hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. In 1920, an athletic league was formed and slowly became one of the leading sports associations in the world of collegiate athletics, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Today, the SWAC is looking towards the next century, growing, supporting, and transforming our intercollegiate sports activities for student athletes and promoting academic excellence. Each SWAC member institution represents a high level of integrity and sportsmanship. We are the SWAC, building champions for life. On their hands. Who has the football now as we get set to go back to game action? As you see a lot of the fans on hand. Enjoying the Tiger mascots right there. Of course, we have an overcast day in Houston and downtown Houston, Texas, but it's a perfect day on the field for football. Oh, 50 degrees and just not not too hot. That's perfect. As a football player, this is what you, what you want. No sun beating on you. So Jace Wilson back at quarterback. Last time he was out there, tossed a 67-yard touchdown pass to Leary. So the Tigers, first and 10, they fake it to Owens. Pass, and it's off of the hands of Quay Davis as he reached out and tried to pull that one in. That's a, that, that was inaccurate. We'll, we'll go with that. That was just way too high. But Davis almost made one heck of a catch right there, uh, skying up and just leaping up and grabbing it. Just couldn't hang on to it. That last punt by Kenny Lee Pham, very short, only 26 yards. And then Leary ran up and caught it. So that's why the Tigers have such great field position here. This time it goes to Quay Davis. Davis has some room. And now it's a foot race. Davis down the sideline, and he's going to be knocked down at about the nine-yard line. But Quay Davis took that little wide receiver screen and turned it into a huge play for Texas Southern. Well, you know, I talked earlier about the impact plays and what needs to happen. The Braves have to stop the run. They're committed to stopping that run, and they're using a lot of play action that sets up big plays. Look at that. You see how many Braves were up forward on that play action and just left a seam where Davis just grabbed it, and I love He thought nothing about it. He exploded and just took off and started running as fast as he can. Great pursuit angle by the Braves. 
from, from stopping it to be a touchdown. But I'll tell you what, I love the way their play calling is. And whatever script they got going, they need to go ahead and mark this one as one they keep around. And you see head coach Clarence McKinney out there on the field congratulating his team on a good start. And that's the thing about it, Jorge. We've done several of the Tigers games this year, and every opposition coach we talk to, they all say, we keep telling our team, this Texas Southern team is a good football team. You cannot sleep on them. But if you look at their record, it's right. kind of hard to convince your team. You know, there's always that thing, right? Yeah. You're as good as your record. That's who you are. That's who you are. And then if you're looking at an opponent, if you look at their record and you go, oh, well, they must not be any good. And you haven't looked at TSU because they have the playmakers. They have skilled players that are that are fantastic. They've got a really good, solid defensive line. They've got some – it's just they've made some mistakes at time. Penalties really – has chewed them up in turnovers throughout this season. And if they can just keep their game clean today, uh, the Braves are going to have all they can handle today. So first down for Texas Southern, and they go to Owens, and he's smothered in the backfield. Terrence Ellis, one of the Braves who got there first. Well, he just came hammering <laughs> through there. Woo! Much to say on that, but that was just brutal. But you can tell they are committed to that run, and they are coming. Loss of three on the play. So second down now coming up for the Tigers from Texas Southern University. Wilson to pass. Fires inside, has Leary. Leary tries to shake away, but he can't do it, so he's going to be taken down. But it appears to be around the 11-yard line. You know, you still feel is still decked out for soccer. So when you get to some of those lines areas there, it's, it gets a little bit uh, confusing. Yeah, Dynamo played an MLS playoff game here yesterday. That's why we're playing on Sunday. And they did win. They're moving on. So now a big third down for Texas Southern. Jace Wilson at quarterback, and he has Owens to his right. Wilson gives it to Owens. Owens to the five, and he's in for the touchdown. Ladarius Owens does a great job. That little hesitation may have gotten it done as he carries it in for the touchdown for Texas Southern. Talk about executing the play really well. That was looking at that defense to see exactly what they were doing, see if he had a quick hot route. Watch, he looks, and then he just sticks it on there and then moves around, and Owens... As soon as he gets that ball, he just starts taking off. And again, Wilson does a great job of following through like he's got something going on. Officially, it's a 10-yard touchdown run by Ladarius Owens as he takes it in. Five plays on the drive, 59 yards, and it took the Tigers a minute and 54 seconds. TSU coming out strong with the offense so far. We're still in the first quarter, 14-0. Tigers after the run by Owens.
And you're taking a good look at Ladarius Owens on the sideline. All 5'9", 190 pounds of him. He's the leading rusher in the SWAC. And right before the break, he just ran for a 10-yard touchdown. That drive, five plays, 59 yards, and they did it in 154. That's the sixth touchdown of the year. And the Braves on the kickoff return here. It's Williams, and he's got some room, and then he's upended there. A nice tackle by Texas Southern. But it was Anthony Williams on the return for Alcorn State. And Perry Wells with the tackle there. That's that's what you're looking for. Get him, get him in the leg, get him flying, and take him down. Now, as for the Braves right here, Butch, I mean, they just need to calm themselves down, right? I, I really think, you know, that earlier almost interception by Jacob Williams just kind of rattled them, and they started being very conservative. I think they need to come out with their own playbook, go back to their script, and just say attack and start getting their – and now they're good, balanced offense. That's what they do well. So they just need to get back to what they do. Last week, Alcorn may have played their best game of the season. So coming off of that – it's a little surprising as they go to Howard on the run. Howard's still on his feet, but there are a lot of black jerseys in the backfield there. You could see Howard dancing, but they kept coming up and coming up. That was an absolutely great job of the D-end on that side, just penetrating up the field. Watch, watch the linebacker scoop right around there, and they just give him nowhere to go, and then they just keep coming. When you talk about team tackling, that's exactly what that was. Don't stay blocked, right? I mean, that's what your defensive uh, coordinator, your coach is going to tell him. Ever Todd, don't stay blocked. Move to the ball, Levin hats on the ball. That's what they did right there. Perfect. Alcorn on second down. They go back to Howard. Some tough yardage inside, but he got about two. And, of course, it'll be interesting to see what Elliot Rathen, the offensive coordinator for the Braves, comes up with on this series because so far that TSU defense has done a pretty good job slowing down that offense from yeah. Alcorn State. And they've been really strong against the run, right? And I think that's what, you know, you, you have to stop the run. And I mean, that's why I mentioned about Pimpins uh, and Noel being really, really strong today about, you know, how this result's going to end. Third and seven to convert for Alcorn State. Allen is ranked fourth in the SWAC in passing, and he will throw it on third down. Fires a strike, has his man. That's a first down for the Braves. He has Akeem McNair coming across the middle there, put the ball right on the numbers. Yeah, when you say fire, I mean, that's what that was. That was fire coming out of the hands. Call him a wizard. <laughs> that thing just was burning and puts it right. He had to catch it. It was self-defense. <laughs> We've seen Allen before. Very poised in the pocket. You saw a little bit of it there. This time he has time, throws it underneath, and good coverage by the Tigers. Jacob Williams, who makes another tackle. Jacob came into this game with 89 tackles. 17.5 of those were for loss. He, he is everywhere. Not the biggest guy. Not He just has a nose for the football, and he's relentless. I mean, that, that's, that's a great compliment you can give a guy when they're relentless. They just won't quit. He finds a way. Uh, he's always around the ball or helping create some activity. Second and seven now for the Braves. And Allen will throw it again. Allen has some time, cranking it deep. Has a receiver out there, and he hits him in stride. A beautiful pass from Allen to Adams. T. Adams coming up with that catch, and it's a huge gain for the Alcorn State Braves. Yeah, and Imani Harris, uh, he gets beat there, but what he does do is at least make that tackle, right? He got beat, but he made sure he didn't let him get all the way in the end zone. But again, that was a foot race, and he was losing. And I love the fact that he dives in there and grabs him before he gets into the end zone. Just a nice job by Tavarius Adams. That ball might have been a tad behind him, kept his eyes on it, squeezed it, and then T. Adams brought it in. So it's a huge gain right there for the Braves. So they're knocking on the door now, trying to push in the touchdown. Call it first and goal from the nine. They give it to Howard. Howard has room on the outside, and Howard is in the end zone, and the Braves are on the scoreboard. You know, that was the first time Howard had any breathing room at all when he, since he touched the ball, and it's amazing because that the whole that whole right, right or left side of the defense just collapsed inside, and he had easy, easy sailing uh, to the end zone. DeMarcus Gord, number 71, really collapsed that side of the line and allowed that spring. Howard? Came over from Syracuse. He's a transfer. Right now, he's fourth in the SWAC in rushing, but you saw his ability to bounce that to the outside. You know, he can get the tough 
yardage inside, but he also showed you he can bounce it outside. As Keone adds the extra point attempt right there, Keone, it is good. And the Braves are on the scoreboard. Yeah, and they did, you know, and again, watch that whole block collapse. I think he was surprised he had that much room. <laughs> but uh, big number 71, Gordon, really just collapsed that whole side, creating a great space. Uh, and, and, and the Braves now, I'm sure they feel totally different. Six plays, 73 yards, three minutes and 17 seconds on that scoring drive. Bridge. And it was a good seal over there. Just a really good job of keeping everybody inside. The Tigers from TSU did not contain... And Howard saw it, and he bounced it to the outside, took it into the end zone. So that's going to make Alcorn State feel a lot better at this point because they had to get something going on. And you know the offensive coordinator, Elliot Rathen, he went back to the drawing board, came up with something that drive. Yeah, and you talked about Aaron Allen's arm and, and how that was an absolutely beautiful, beautiful pass and catch combination. And again, uh, you know, did it with a little bit of play action, opened it up, and then just relaxed, and he threw the ball. He's got an arm because it, it doesn't even look like he's trying to – throw hard and it's just sailing so brand new ball game 14-7 as Noah Kiani kicks it off it sends Owens back to about the 6 yard line and here comes Ladarius Owens and he's going to get over the 20 and be dropped at about the 22 yard line so the Tigers have had a lot of success offensively will take over the football again we talked about Owens and uh, of course he leads the SWAC in rushing done a lot of jobs. He's already gone over 2,000 yards this year for his career, as you see Fred McNair looking on. So he's done a good job. It's uh, five touchdowns, uh, make it six. Yeah, six today. Six yeah. today. Um, just done an outstanding job. He's done everything Texas Southern could have wanted from a running back this year. So first and ten for Jace Wilson and the offense. And Wilson will throw it again. Has a man open, and he goes high. Was trying to hit Leary, who was all by himself. And Chase just had a little too much mustard on that one. Yeah, and again, we, we talked about how perfect he was on that big long ball. Now watch right here. Watch Owens with the great block on big number 99. And then he just overthrows him. I mean, that was way over the top of Leary. Yeah. Chase has to complete that when he has a guy wide open over there. Just sh shot it in there high. So second and 10 now for the TSU offense. Fakes it to Owens. Wilson keeps, spins away, he's not going to call it a gain of one. A great defensive play out there by Stamarian Edwards for Man, the that, Braves. That is picture-perfect defense on open field tackling, uh, making the, offender, uh, the, the, the runner commit and just being patient and getting a great tackle. So now Tigers from Texas Southern are looking at a third and eight to convert. Wilson has the pocket running down, but he shoots it downfield, and all alone is Johnson, and he makes the catch. Jaron Johnson was all by himself, and a better pass from Wilson, we might have had another splash play. Oh, no question, but Johnson did a great job of coming back and just waiting and waiting, and you know that ball in the air felt like it took hours. <laughs> And that takes us to the end of the first quarter. And what a first quarter it was. You see Owens dancing in for six. And then how about the long pass to Leary? 14-7, Texas Southern in front.
Butch Alson Door and Jorge Vargas with you at Shell Energy Stadium where the TSU Tigers are leading the Alcorn State Braves 14-7 as we get set to start the second quarter. And one of the reasons they have that lead is because of the play from Chase Wilson. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you what. I mean, he, he is electric. 165 yards already, 7 of 9, 77% completion rate. That's fantastic. He only averages 150 yards a game. He's already played a full game at this point in one quarter. Tigers with the football now, operating first and 10. They are just beyond midfield, and they go inside to Owens. And Owens slips away from the first tacklers. He's going to gain about six yards on that carry. And we do have an injured player on the field. It's one of the Braves. It looks like it's Cullen Scott. And it is Scott, the 6'2", 295-pound junior from Rosedale, Louisiana. Yeah, whatever happened to him, he was hurt right right during that play. No question about it. Whatever it is, uh, you know, they call it when you get certain injuries, it's like a bite. <laughs> he got bit. Hope he's all right. But, you know, back to Jace Wilson, Butch, I mean, he's 7 of 9. And what dawns on me is really the two passes he didn't have were ones he just sailed over. Uh, he just he got leg whipped. Yeah, number 98 yeah. leg whipped around him and hit him right in that uh, right leg of his. Hopefully it didn't uh, either hyper extend or, or, or mess up his knee there, but he's in pain. Looks like he's going to get up here. Yeah, it was his teammate, Andrew Cole. Yeah. A little bit of friendly fire there. Good to see him putting some putting some weight on it. That's key when you can see that happening. And it looked like he was able to roll out of it a little bit. It wasn't just stop, but man, that's that's a lot of a lot of a lot of big body coming at you and hitting you in the leg. So let's hope he recovers and is able to get back in. He's all right. And that'll bring us to second down now for Texas Southern. Second and about four. Make it a long four. Wilson's going to throw it. Steps up in the pocket, fires underneath, and a good catch. Scooped that right off the turf, and the official said no. Trenton Leary appeared to have gotten his hands underneath the football, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if they looked at that one. Yeah, I, th I, thought, I thought he caught it. And again, Wilson shuffled backwards, showing it off his back heel. And the ref's right there. That ball does look like it may have come back down. The ref's certainly right there looking at it, so you'd have to give him a... And they're showing the replay on the big scoreboard here, and you can hear the reaction from the fans... And now I think the officials are going to take a look at this because uh, I saw Clarence McKinney called one of them over. He, he wants to have a replay, a replay decision. Yeah, I think that's what made it tough for them to ask for the replay was as you saw the ref in perfect position, so you figure he had to see it. Again, the so it looks like they're not going to do the full challenge here, and they'll get him back to play. They're going to back, uh, back to play, and it'll be third down for Texas Southern University. They talked about it. Third and four now for the first down. Wilson under pressure, and he's hit and taken down. Terrence Ellis with a big hit in the backfield for the Braves. Wow. That pocket collapsed on Wilson quickly. Boy, that was fast. Him and Devin Dawson, Ellis and Devin Dawson both get there. And wow. He had nowhere to go. Big number 55, 59 on the backside, and that allowed uh, Ellis to just lay it down, if you, if you want to look at it that way. Whew. So Texas Southern will have to punt the football away on fourth down. That'll bring on Patrick Helen again to kick the football away. He's averaging 38.4 a kick. High snap, but he has it. Tries to get underneath this one. Akeem McNair calling for the fair catch. Ball is loose. Tigers from TSU have recovered as Akeem McNair muffed the punt. And number 46 made the recovery. What a big play being right there. Alex Boldy, uh, Bolden uh, with a big tackle right there. Uh, picking up the ball, excuse me. And again, you got to be right there. You make him make the catch. And then you go there and you recover. Great job. Bolden really alert on the play. Jumped on that football after Akeem McNair muffed the punt. 
That's why you got to be right there waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so the Tigers get a big break here, and now they go first and 10 with the football resting on the 14-yard line. They'll end around to Leary. He has some room, and he's going to pass it into the end zone, and it's a touchdown for Texas Southern University. A little razzle-dazzle there as they pitched it back, and he tossed it into the end zone, and it's a touchdown as King Blanton, number three, made the catch for the Tigers. All hail the King, and boy, they're just opening up the playbook. And again, he looks like he's running all the way, and then he just pulls it down, throws it a little short, but King comes back, grabs the ball in the end zone, Woo, whatever script they've got going to the Tigers, they wish they had this script a little bit earlier in the season, right, But They even coordinated the celebration there in the end zone. That was yeah. nice. Uh, but that was really a good catch by King Blanton there. As you mentioned, it was a little underthrown as the extra point is good. And the Tigers move out to a 21-7 lead. We'll be right back. And Some college players give it their all. But when I say player. I don't mean the ones with the ball. I mean the ones that play drums, the brass, the woodwinds. These players bring excitement to the stadium. Because for them, halftime isn't a break. It's game time. Pepsi is a proud supporter of HBCU students. Pepsi and HBCUs. That's what I like. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Go Tigers! Go Tigers. 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 In 1920, an athletic league was formed and slowly became one of the leading sports associations in the world of collegiate athletics, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Today, the SWAC is looking towards the next century, growing, supporting, and transforming our intercollegiate sports activities for student athletes and promoting academic excellence. Each SWAC member institution represents a high level of integrity and sportsmanship. We are the SWAC, building champions for life. On their hands. Texas Southern head coach Clarence McKinney and his offensive coordinator David Marsh clearing out the playbook today as the reverse pass is good for a touchdown 15 yards from Trenton Leary to King Blanton in the end zone. That play, the second one play drive, the second one play scoring drive of the day for Texas Southern. That one, one play, 15 yards, 10 seconds. And Leary, what a job he did not giving that one away. So here come the Braves now. Kickoff will be Williams. It goes over his head. Sails into the end zone. So Alcorn will start first and 10 from their 25-yard line. Yeah, and I mean, you know, I, I'll count that as another big play. I, you know, you said stop the big plays, uh, get the turnovers. Right now, Texas Southern, all the things that they needed to do, winning the turnover battle. They've got uh, two big plays. I could have had a third one, pick six. They're getting it done. And take a look at the stats. Rushing yards, Alcorn with 19. Uh, Texas Southern, shockingly, just eight. But 180 in the air, uh, That that is just huge. And again, like I said, that's usually for a full game. They're just in the second quarter. And if you were talking to Clarence McKinney, he would say we just hit the plays that have been there all season long that we just not haven't been opportunistic enough to capitalize on them. So here we go with Allen with a pass. Throws a strike, and it's complete to Malik Rogers. Good catch by Rogers. And I tell you what, that Aaron Allen, what a delivery he has. I, I was thinking the same thing. Just watch this replay. He sets his feet. When he decides, he just th I mean, drills it in there. He gets it there, and he gets it there in a hurry. So call it second and short for the Braves. 
Allen turns, and he's going to hand it to Duffy, and Duffy's going to be dropped for a loss in the backfield, and that's Javius Williams again. And he's had a fantastic year for the TSU Tigers on defense. He has. 24 has just done a lot. I mean, we, again, I think it's the third game, fourth game. He comes off the edges. He comes flying in. He's in good coverage. He's, he's a good, sure tackler, whether it's open field or, or coming off the edge. Uh, he, he, he causes trouble for another offense. Javius Williams came into the ball game with 54 tackles, but more importantly, he's had three sacks. You mentioned him coming in from the outside. Yeah. They cut him loose a lot, so now the Braves are facing a third and two to keep this drive alive. Aaron Allen fires underneath, has Rodgers, and that's a first down for the Braves. So they will move the sticks with that one. He has a good chemistry with his receivers, especially when you talk about Malik Rogers and Monterio Hunt, who we have not seen today. We've not seen him catch the football today. Well, Rogers, I'll say right there, what he did a good job was he found that little gap, and then he just right at the very end came back to the ball, just didn't sit there and wait. He gave his uh, quarterback a good target, and we've already established that, <laughs> that uh, Aaron throws a pretty crisp ball <laughs> in there. Gets there in a hurry. So Allen operating first and 10, hands it to Howard, and Howard gets a tough yard, and then he's thrown back in the backfield. Jacob Williams is there, Bogarty is there. Once again, Tigers responding quickly on defense. Yeah, I'm impressed with the way they're they're playing defense. And yeah, Bogarty uh, just came flying in there, filled the gaps, linebackers, that's what they have to do. And you've got that defensive line uh, that is just playing really, really well. Uh, I haven't talked about uh, uh, Brian Booker, uh, number 72, deep in there, too. He's been really solid at the point of attack as well. Second and eight for Aaron Allen. And the Alcorn State offense has some time. Allen throws a beautiful pass downfield, and it's caught. What a big play by Montario Hunt. We just talked about him, and there he is showing his skills off right there skills that was absolutely fantastic he was covered he was absolutely covered right there no room oh just a little bit of room he stretches out and catches that ball and comes down with him i thought he could get to it i didn't think he would be able to actually haul it in watch it right there i mean he's covered as good as you could possibly cover anybody yeah but that pass was oh. right where it had to be i mean aaron allen put it on a dime you talk about dropping dimes and then what a catch by Montario Hunt, the leading receiver on this team. That was his 35th catch of the year. Came in with over 500 yards. And they go back to Howard on the run. So Howard trying to check the Tigers inside. And again, what's interesting to me is every time that the Braves have had a big play and they really have been kind of squashed on offensively as far as running the ball, they'll get a big one right after another big play. It's like TSU kind of doesn't the same intensity on the run game doesn't happen there for another play. Because right there, I mean, it was a very successful run. It was only four, four yards, but it was a really good play right at the teeth of the, of the Tigers' defense. Second down now for the Braves. Ball at about the 18. Allen on a roll, dumps it off to Howard. Howard is going to pick up nice yards before he's forced out of bounds close to the 15-yard line. Jacob Williams was just trailing him right on his tail making sure he was uh, it was going out of bounds. He was not going to get up the field. Ball's going to be marked just outside of the 16-yard line, so that's where they'll have it. Third down for the Braves with the ball obviously in the red zone, and they're knocking on the door. Let's call it third and six for a first down. Coach nope. said, and we talked about Allen's passing ability, but he said he was a willing runner. This may be one of those opportunities. Third down. Allen, then a good pocket, fires a strike to McNair, and it goes through the hands, and it's an incomplete pass. Good coverage by the Tigers, Perry Wells, but you might have thought McNair might have been able to handle that. And watch the defensive lineman. They created a gap, and you saw, and then you saw someone fill it. So he didn't have that opportunity to run at all. They're doing a good job of making sure the running lanes for him to stop. And again, good defense and breaking on that ball and, and knocking it down. But there was a flag thrown down near the sideline, near the uh, Alcorn State bench. And now they're going to talk about it. Jarvis Walker and his crew. With 9.06 to go here in the second quarter. 
not sure what they're looking at. It, it didn't come down well after the play, correct? Fourth down. Did he say number four? Aaron Allen. That's Aaron I, Allen. I, had to re -look. I, was, I thought he was number four. Oh my. I don't know if we can see a replay of maybe what Allen did. Personal uh, foul on a quarterback. That may be a first. Uh, as you see Clarence McKinney gathering the troops on the sideline. and But that's going to really hurt Alcorn State because they were knocking on the door. And it makes this field goal a whole lot harder. I mean, that, that's, you know, add 15 to your field goal. That's not, that's not something you're interested in. Yeah, it looks like it's, uh, they call it a 48-yard field goal by Noah Kiani, who is the SWAC specialist of the week, by the way, for his performance last week. Kiani from 38. And it's going to be just short. It goes right under the crossbar. So Kiani comes up short on the field goal attempt, and with 9.06 to go, we're going to pause for a timeout. Texas Southern out in front, 21-7. to Welcome back, everyone, to Shell Energy Stadium, where the Texas Southern Tigers are getting set to take possession of the football again. Jorge, what do you think so far about the performance by the Texas Southern team, especially when you talk about offense, when you consider that Alcorn's coming off their best performance of the year last week? Yeah, no, I, you know, what looks to me is that they had a good game plan, and they're executing extremely well. And they're playing loose, right? They're like, we got nothing to lose. We're going to go out here, we're going to execute and play well. Uh, they did a good job of, of keeping penalties to an absolute minimum, uh, and they've executed plays, and Jace Wilson has been accurate. I mean, he's been on target, and that's a huge difference. That may be the key. He has been hitting his receivers today. So first and 10 for the Tigers from the 32. And the handoff is to Owens, and he has a big hole. Finally forced out of bounds by number 29, Robert McDaniel. But a nice game by Ladarius Owens. Owens <laughs> is mad at himself. He didn't take, he's like, I should have taken that to the house. Look how much room he had. And he felt like, man, if I could have just burst around that corner right there, I'd be in the end zone. He was kind of pouting on his way back to the huddle. What a job by that offensive line. I mean, that hole was huge. That was the proverbial driver truck through a hole. Yeah. That was a huge hole right there. So first down for the Tigers from Texas Southern. Wilson looking to throw, but we have a whistle before he could get it off, and we have a flag down on the far side again. Yeah, and that hole was big because Jacquez 
do. Number 11, the big linebacker, came stunting in, and the lineman did a great job of just driving him right out of the hole, taking him where he wanted to go, everywhere but the hole. Here's that penalty bug. Yeah, it'll cost the Tigers five. So we got to maintain focus. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what you have to do. So now you're looking at uh, first down and 15 to go for Texas Southern after the penalty. Wilson looking to throw again. Fires it quickly. Has his man. Steps out of bound. Nice catch by Quay Davis right there near the sideline. Goes out at about the 45-yard line. Wilson did an incredible job of reading it. Once he was open, he just threw him open at the very end. He could see the pressure was coming. Knew he had to get rid of it quick. Made the decision. Very accurate. So TSU trying to get the tempo back up again. Chase Wilson on the roll. Has a man open inside. It's Leary. And he goes down right on the sticks. It's going to be another first down for the TSU Tigers. Let's see where they spotted. I mean, he was right. Now they're going to mark him right behind the sticks. That was a bad so, spot, but it was a first down. So <laughs> third and short after the spot. Tigers going to give it to Owens. And Owens is going to have the first down. So with 7.28 and counting, TSU with the football here in the second quarter, driving the ball. They had they've had no problems from an offensive standpoint so far in this game. Wilson again on first and 10. Has a man open. That is Means. Ian Means this time. He has another first down. At some point, Alcorn State's going to have to do something and play closer on those wide outs and stop giving up that uh, 10 and out. Yeah, you keep playing that soft zone. You're just giving it to them. What TSU's doing a good job. The receivers are sitting down where it's open. No, another first down for the Tigers. Wilson looking deep. Under pressure. And he goes down. Good job by the defense from Alcorn State. Wilson was dancing, but they closed out the dance there. Big play in the backfield, and he's going to be knocked down. Yeah, Devin Dawson, number 59 for the Braves, is down. He either lost win or something right there, but he was one of those guys closing in. And again, he's trying to point. He just needed to get rid of the ball right there and know that that play's over. And it was Dawson who made that tackle, and in, in making that tackle... Looks like they're looking at his lower right leg there. Probably the way he fell or his teammate fell on his leg. But 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 right there, Wilson, when he was trying to point and dictate, when once they didn't move and couldn't get open, he just needed to throw that ball away. His decision-making has been fantastic. And going with Wilson, 9 of 12, 179 yards and a touchdown. That is a heck of a day. Well, and we did the uh, Texas Southern-Jackson State game last week and watching Wilson in that game when he was decisive and made up his mind what he was going to do with the football he played well it was the indecision that cost him and, and, and led to some mistakes last week right and, and i think the key of sometimes the play just not there or, or maybe it is you just don't see it. It, it right i mean at the end of the day you don't see it. you got to get rid of it uh you know you take a big big loss it just it just hurts the trying to fight the chains there hey but he's playing a great game so far today jace wilson 5'11", 175 out of Missouri City, Texas. Transferred in from Furman. He is, as Jorge said earlier, he's been on target today, right on the money. Second down now and long for the Texas Southern offense. Wilson floats one high for Leary, and that's going to be caught by Leary. What an incredible catch. You could see his jersey being tugged by Napoleon Collier pulling at his jersey, and Leary came away with a great catch. How was there no flag? Okay, that, That's the first thing, but he made the catch, so we're okay. Watch, he's getting pulled on, yanked on, and he still catches that ball regardless. Tigers first and goal. They give it to Ja'Cory, and he's going to bang it on in. Ja'Cory Howard takes it in for the TSU touchdown. So they bring in the big back to do some of the dirty work, and Howard bangs his way in for the touchdown. He is a hammer, and Howard, that's his sixth touchdown of the season. Came in with five touchdowns, add one to it, and the big guy gets his sixth touchdown. The offensive line has been creating great seams uh, for the Tigers running backs, and again, very decisive, takes it right in for the touchdown. Texas Southern playing a very up-tempo game after the big catch by Trenton Leary. They got back, got to the line of scrimmage quickly, and gave it to Ja'Cory Howard, who banged it in for another touchdown. And so the kick is on the way by Gustavo Romero, and it is good. 
and the Texas Texas Southern Tigers are shocking the world a little bit here. 28 to 7. Tigers are leading Alcorn State after that touchdown by Ja'Cory Howard. On their hands. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School. We're powered by purpose. Doritos created Solid Black in 2021 to help fuel the initiatives of black leaders seeking to drive real change. And this year, Doritos Solid Black is welcoming 16 new change makers to the program. We are Solid Black. Huge play coming up. Oh, wait, I can't pass. Talking about dropping the ball. I got the score. <laughs> Tostitos Hardy Dippers. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. You want to be like the greats? First, believe you are. Greatness requires drip, not like that, like this. The greats aren't afraid to fail. They're fueled by it. Trophies require greatness, but greatness doesn't require trophies. Because greatness isn't about what you've done. It's about what you do next. On their hands. Welcome back, everyone. And no, you do not need to adjust your set. And that's your Corey Howard. And that young man has a lot to dance about as he just danced his way into the end zone on a four-yard touchdown run for Texas Southern. It was an eight-play, 68-yard drive. And they did it in three minutes and 24 seconds. And the Tigers are leading Alcorn State 28-7. to and here come the Braves if they take the kickoff here. It's Williams. He's caught, and he's going to be drop shot at short of the 20, maybe around the 18-yard line. So this is not the start Fred McNair and his Braves had expected coming into this game today. Yeah, Xavier Goins led that charge uh, as well as Aaron Powell in the tackle for the special teams there for the Tigers. And, and yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think uh, if you're just tuning in, the Tigers are tuned up. I mean, they are, they are playing uh, just – executing their plays perfect chase wilson uh putting the drop in times all over over the field and again playmakers are making plays uh, and again the braves right now they just need to settle down and play their game they have a, they have a lot of tools on their side and they can get it done just got to keep their balance and, and attack a lot of firepower on that Alcorn State side, so they're not out of this by any stretch of the imagination with 537 to go here in the second quarter so Allen swings one out quickly to Williams. It goes through his hands, hits someone else on the backside, and it goes down as an incomplete pass. Yeah, and I think what the you know to me what the Braves need to do is just just keep their composure, right? You just got to play your game right now. If they get too too predictable and start to just get too pass friendly, well, it really makes it easier for the Tigers. And I don't I think it's way too early to just avoid what you've came in here and you've looked you, you study all week trying to find weaknesses you obviously have some things you've looked at during the week if you get away from those now you're really getting away from your own game and there's plenty of time to to, to be able to bring things back together and, and quite honestly you know when you've got uh, Jar Jarvie and Howard uh, in the backfield uh, you need to make sure he's touching the ball and he's putting some damage because uh, he lays a lethal lethal hit so second and ten now for the Braves. And the, the Alcorn is behind 28 to 7. And yet, Aaron Allen has played a pretty good game. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's a great point. 
And so Allen will throw it again. Stumbles a little bit. Still on his feet. Dumps it off to Howard. Howard has some room. And Howard's going to be taken down after he picks up close to 20 yards. Call it 18 yards and a first down for the Braves from Alcorn State. Josiah Hartman with an absolute fantastic open field tackle right there. And again, uh, you're right. Allen with a great pass, good composure right there. He almost stumbled at the beginning, but then just drops it right in there. But watch that tackle. He's getting ready to creep some damage down the field. Uh, and they put him down. Yeah, Hardman, a 5'10", 185-pound junior, making a big play. But this is Allen on first down, cranking it way out there. Has a receiver, but it's going to be intercepted by Ja'Cory Benjamin. Benjamin has some room as he brings it back, crosses the 50. Benjamin's still on his feet, and he's out of bounds as he gets inside the 30-yard line. So Allen looked like that ball may have slipped down just a little bit. Yeah, I would have to say that ball just got away from him because it, it, it's not even close to the receiver. And I think it's the pressure he got right on the very end there that just made that ball not go where he's trying to put it. Uh, I want to say it was uh, David Walker coming off the edge there that made him adjust that throw. And again, instead of it going left, it just veered to the right and kept sailing perfectly to the to the defender. And Ja'Cory Benjamin saw it all the way, the 5'11", 175-pounder from Houston, so a homecoming. He likes playing at home. And a great read on the interception. Saw it all the way, came up and made the pick. He was probably shocked. Because <laughs> it was like, this, is, this one's to me. But I agree with you. When it came out from the rotation and everything, it looked like yeah. maybe it slipped out under the pressure. But it's a big turnover in the second big one of the game. You had the muff punt that led to a touchdown right after Alcorn State had scored to make it a 14-7 game. Well, and I think then, we talked about excuse me, Butch, yeah. is that they had to avoid the big play for TSU and they've really allowed several now big big plays from TSU defensively and certainly and offensively as well. So they worked that out game. now. It was a the penalty the against ground. the Tigers from Texas First Southern down. on the re interception Texas return. And as you can see, it is not a popular call here in <laughs> Shell <laughs> Energy Stadium. Yeah, I think it was too much uh, celebration, I believe. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that was horrible, right? And so, can't have that. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. So the penalty will back up Texas Southern, so the Tigers will have it now at about the 45-yard line. Call it the 44-yard line. As you can say, some several TSU fans and here not excited about the refs at the moment. Now they're going to respot. Re they're going to have to mark it off again to make sure they got it right. We'll be in force in that spot. First down, Texas Southern. Whenever they're done marking the football, Texas Southern will have a first and 10 with 4.42 to go here in the first half and with an opportunity to pat that lead. Yeah, no, and again, I think it, you got 4.42, like you said. Uh, good drive is what they're looking for. Eat some time off and score. First and 10, give is to Owens around the right side. Owens has some room. And Owens has 15 yards there, maybe 14 yards, probably 13, and a first down for Texas Southern. Wow, they are just hitting in all cylinders, and I've got to get a lot of credit to that offensive line. Whether it's inside or outside, they're creating room. First and 10. We uh, Wilson to pass. He has King Blatton, and Blatton hangs on despite the big hit right there by Andrew Smith, who laid the hammer to him. Yeah. He hung onto that ball. That was impressive because that was a heck of a shot. Another first down for the Tigers from Texas Southern. Three receivers to his left this time. Hands it to Owens. And Owens could not squeeze through that hole that time, but he did pick up three or four yards on the carry. I was going to say, you say he didn't squeeze through. He still got a really positive play uh, out of that. And that's just, just great effort by him and squeezing himself through. For extra couple yards. Tyler Smith on the tackle for Alcorn. Now we have a whistle before they could get the snap away. And so that time, illegal. 76. Tiger penalty, main second down. Illegal procedure against the Tigers from Texas Southern. Dennis Jones, the guilty party there. The 6'6, 370 pound right guard. You know, when you're 370 and you move, people know it. 
<laughs> you can't sneak it. <laughs> yeah. I could get away with some movement and no one will notice. <laughs> you, you can't really hide. That's true. He went to, he's from Dallas, went to South Oak Cliff. So second and long after the penalty. Call it second and 11. They go back to Owens with a big hole. Owens is at the five. Touchdown for Ladarius Owens, who looked like he was shot out of a cannon. And again, that offensive line just created a great hole. I think it was supposed to go further to the right there. And he just saw a gap and cut back left. And it was just wide open. Again, look, he made that cut right there, and that's what freed him open. But it was supposed to go off tackle. He just saw room. Great vision by him. And, of course, the speed and the burst is exceptional. You know, Coach McKinney told us that young man has all the skills to play on the next level. The only thing he needs is the opportunity. Well, he's playing on Sunday today. <laughs> <laughs> so Gustavo Romero for the extra point, and his kick is good. TSU Tigers have jumped out to a 35-7 lead thanks to that touchdown by Ladarius Owens. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. As Texas Southern is just coming off a touchdown drive, it was four plays, 49 yards, and it took them one minute and 35 seconds as the Darius Owens raced 20 yards for the touchdown, number 22. He's had a phenomenal season, and he's just capping it off today. I mean, he's had an incredible day so far. And Romero kicks it off. It's going to be short. And here come the Braves on the return. And they're going to get this one all the way up to the near the 40-yard line, over the 40-yard line. And that was Geno Johnson on the return. Excuse me, scratch that. Make it Brandon Rogers on the return for Alcorn State. So now the Braves have the ball with three minutes to go here in the first half. And they have found themselves in a really big hole right now. So, Jorge, what... Does Fred McNair and the Braves have to do to kind of dig themselves out of this hole? Well, they got the ball in great field position. I just think, again, I think you got to, you know, you, you got to go to your over. I, I, I'd give them some run, come at them. I mean, I, I think they got to get aggressive, though, no question about it. There it is. So Allen goes to Jarvion Howard, and he's going to pick up the first down on that carry. Let's see where they put it down. He dove right at the sticks. Well, that's a short mark, too. Yeah, and they're going to put it back just shy of the – he dove forward, so that's interesting. It's going to be a yard shy of the first down as the clock ticks down to the 240 mark. They go back to Howard again. Howard has the first down. Takes it. He's close to the 45-yard line. 
So they've, they've crossed midfield. It did not take long. That's what I mean. Howard just looks mad today. I think you need to give him the ball. And you get one more run right here, and, then, and if it's successful, then you, you play action, and you're going to find someone open. 2.20 to go in the first half. They go back to Howard. And Howard's going to pick up another four or five just right up the middle. Goes off off guard right there for a four or five yards. Yeah, and you're going to see a play action right here because the TSU's starting to come up, and they're expecting that. And they know they have to get physical to get with Howard. Look at the cuts on that guy's yeah. arms. My gosh. Yeah. We have an injured player down, and while we do have an injured player down, it, it gives us a second to talk about that guy, number zero, Jarvion Howard. You know, talking to Coach this week, I thought it was very interesting. You know how some people have... You may have your girlfriend come down to visit you once a week or your family may come, you know, yeah. to visit you on campus once a week because you get homesick. Yeah. Jarvion Howard has his mother bring his dog to cam on campus once a week. <laughs> so he can, you know, I mean, I tell you what, that's, I, hey, no, it's a man after my own heart there. That's a real animal lover there. Wow. And he's got to make sure he sees this dog once a week. Man. So a tip of the hat to Jarvion Howard. I didn't get the Tip name. Tip to his mom. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully she lives not too far away. I didn't get the name of the dog, but I do know it was a pit bull. So second down now coming up for the Braves. There's it. Play action. Allen's looking down deep. Fires a strike, and he has a man. What a great catch over there, but he's off the field of play, and they said he's out of bounds. But Malik Rogers reached up and tried to bring that one down, but he was out of bounds. And again, he was wide open. But it was so short, the receiver had to get back, and then it was too wide. It's right here. By the time he throws that, it's going wide. But look, see, the receiver had three three yards step on top of the defender. It was just short and too far out, outside. Yeah, got his hands on it. Couldn't quite bring it in there. And so it goes down as an incomplete pass, but he would have been out of bounds either way. So a big third down. They go to Nico Duffy, and Nico is going to be right at the sticks. It's going to depend on the spot. Yes, it's a first down. For all corn states, so the Braves will move the sticks and they will continue the drive. So how important is it for them to get on the board before halftime in this 35-7 game? Oh, for sure. But, boy, Duffy was lightning right there, wasn't he? But, yeah, it'll change the demeanor in the locker room. If you can come here and you can get points, obviously they need seven. But you just come here, you make sure it's a positive play, you end the half on your offensive score, you have to score, and then you can go in there and you can talk and say, look, all right, you know, Settle down, talk about the things you're doing well, and then really just get a game plan for that second half. But, yes, they have to score here. And you see the officials? Yeah, I thought he was Are visiting was on the sideline. Yeah. They uh, uh, originally gave them the first down, and then now they're talking about it. Yeah, I honestly thought he was a little short, and they gave him the first down. But so now the they're going to play will be on further review for in terms of the runner made behind the game, also to check the game time. So Jarvis Walker and company, they're going to check out the game climb time to make sure we didn't lose too much time off the clock, and also they're going to relook at the spot and see whether or not he did have a first down. Yeah, I think they're going to find it about a yard short. I was surprised that they gave him the first down. The ones we thought were first downs, they marked him short. This one, I thought they gave him the yard. So, uh, not quite sure on that one. But I will say this, uh, man, uh, was it Duffy? Yeah, Duffy. That was like a lightning bolt, the way he flew through there. Uh, just darted in there. Had a small little gap, and he just comes flying through. It's like he just ducks and then just squirts his way in. The offensive line did a really good job of getting a hat on a hat. And when that happens, you'll have a little crease there. And he did a good job of getting through that crease. Yeah, and I think where they got the ball marked now, it looks short. Originally, it was lined up a little bit further and said it was a first down. I, I think right now it, it... Well, and I happen to be watching the official right in front of the Alcorn bench. And yeah. she, she gave the word. She gave the first down signal. Right. So they started to move the chains, and then they decided to bring them back. So. Yeah, no, I think that was a good call. I, Maybe she lost place where that first down marker was. Uh, but they're getting it straight and getting the time right. Was determined. The runner made the line again. The Therefore, it'd be first down at the 36 yard line. Please put 135 on the game clock. 135, and the game clock and the play clock will start on my ready for play signal. 
Hey, nothing wrong with making sure. You know, maybe they didn't reline the the, the yard markers up correctly because that that yard marker was not on the third and six; it was past the the thirty five. So, anyway, they looked at it; they think it's right, and we'll, we'll go forward. But that, that didn't look quite right to me. But we'll search for it. Hey, they went to the instant replay, and that's what Walker and company <laughs> came up with: first and ten. For the Braves from Alcorn State, playing in Houston, Texas on a Sunday afternoon. So Aaron Allen will air it out. Fires for the end zone for Rodgers, and that could have been a touchdown. He had an opportunity to get that ball in there to Rodgers, and he was just a little too strong with that pass. Yeah, he was open. He had the whole left side. Really, he just could have played with and, and let him run underneath it, but he threw it strong and really high and right, and that's the last place he could get to it. Uh, I think the Braves need to find Tavarius Griffin, big number 85. Uh, get him the ball inside. I'm surprised they haven't tried to get him in some of these tight tight windows. So Aaron Allen now on second down. Second and 10, but the time is more important. 1.14 to go in the first half. Allen under some pressure, and he's caught, and he's dropped. Bogarty is there. Jacob Williams is back there. There were several TSU Tigers, and they got to Aaron Allen. My defensive line and that, that big five is just there, finding a way to get there. They're stunting. They're doing a lot of movement. Uh, it's causing confusion for the Braves' offensive linemen, and they are just getting home. It's one thing to call a stunt, but you got to get there. That's going to be a big loss, and then as it stands right now, that's going to affect the possible field goal attempts. Yeah, I mean, right now they got a lot of work to do to get in field goal. I mean, they had what a 36 yarder that fell short, so they got to, they got some work to do. But this has been a drive. Authority, you mentioned it right at the start of the drive that they had enough time to go back to what has worked for them in the past, and that's what they've done on this drive, and that's why they've been successful. Yeah, and I think it started with Howard, right? I mean, they ran, what, three or four successful Howard runs at uh, instant instant gratification there, and then they uh, turned around and, and had a couple of balls, just could not take them home. Allen just a little bit off on a few passes. So a long third down coming up now for the Braves. Allen with three receivers to his left. He's looking in that direction. Throws it underneath, and he's... Went to his big tight end there, but too high for the completed pass. That'll bring up fourth down on the incompletion. Trying to hit Griffin as he was crossing. You know, we talked about Aaron Allen earlier in the game. What nice form he had, the good release he had. Right there, it looked like he had the ball kind of low, and then he just yanked it back and then just trying to gun down his uh, his receiver there. Uh, when he's had some really good throws, it seems like he's more relaxed. And I think right now as this game is he's tightened up a little bit, and that's a drive the Braves uh, certainly will be upset about. I'm sure Coach Clarence McKinney of Texas Southern waiting to see this punt from Kenny Lee Pham. High kick, fair catch call for, and the ball's going to hit and bounce near the 10-yard line. Let's call it the 11. But TSU will have 55 seconds to work with, and they'll also have a 35-7 lead. Yeah, no, and I like the way Leary did that right there. Called the fake, you know, pretending like he was going to catch it past where the ball was bouncing. Uh, get away from it, right? I mean, either you catch it in the air or get away from it. We saw what impact the Braves earlier with that muff punt did. One play later, they were down, you know, what, 14 or 21. I forget what, uh, you know, real quick. And so uh, good job of getting away from it right here. You'll just see some hammering runs right here. How do you think they're going to play this? you think they might try to? get something on the board here or whether they just run it out and go to the locker room at 35-7. You're going to hammer the ball up the middle if you spring something, then you'll then you'll open it up. So Tigers on offense, ball deep in their own territory. And they're going to give inside and a great defensive stand right there by the Braves. A lot of Alcorn Braves right there, including Tyler Smith. Yeah, I think you're going to see more of the same. And again, you got, you got to Owens and Howard. Well, the Darius Owens and Ja'Cory Howard in the backfield together. And Howard actually blocked for Owens right there. But just not a lot going because I think the Braves understand they're just going to try to run the clock out. They'll do one more play right here and then they'll call it, a, call it a half. We're down to 22 seconds to go here in the first half. Wilson gives inside again. Another 
pickup of about two yards, this time by Howard. Ja'Cory Howard on the carry. As the clock ticks down, and now we have a timeout on the field with 11 seconds to go here in the first half. Interesting. The Braves didn't call a timeout a minute ago, but they called it right there to see if they get the stop, what they wanted here. Now you got a big third down, and I still say that you're going to have TSU just run it up the middle. And I think the Braves have one more timeout, so they'll call a timeout after the other one. Have about probably five seconds for a punt return to see if they can make some magic happen. Well, I, I like that uh, strategy, actually, because if you have that extra timeout, why not force them to do it on third down, call another timeout, make them punt. You could have a snap over the punter's head. Yes. He could bobble the snap. I mean, there's Or you a lot go of full things. tilt for the block. Yeah. Right? I mean, you go for the big play. Why, I mean, it doesn't hurt you any. Yeah, you make the other team execute, and it looks like that's what Fred McNair and his staff from Alcorn State is going to do in this situation. Third down now. Third and about eight for Texas Southern. 11 seconds to go here in the first half. And they go to Owens, who goes off tackle, and he's going to be slammed down by Tyler Smith again. And then you heard the whistle. The timeout is called. Yeah, we got six seconds left, so I was off by a second. And now you make a punt, and something magic can happen. I mean, that's that's what they're looking for. And again, I, I guess I would ask you, though, do you come at it, or do you uh, work on a return? I would try to block it if, if I were the coach, but of course I'm sitting up here. <laughs> But they're so close to their end zone, you go for the block, you let it all hang out, because even if you get a penalty, it doesn't hurt you because we're going into halftime anyway. Yeah, no, I, so, I kind of... So I say lay out for this the block. Is, this is where all your preparation matters. You know if there's a weakness on a block, and you know if they're susceptible to a better return, right? But, but because where it sits where the ball, I'm with you, you kind of go for the block because you could maybe score the touchdown on the block. Just don't, you know... Let's see what happens. Now they got everybody up there as they get set to punt it away. Patrick Helen standing just outside of his own end zone. They're coming and didn't quite get there. Uh, call off sides on the Braves, I believe, right here. Wow. Wow. Edwin Sermauer. Oh, start. 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 That's going to make this Main. punt really important. So it was Edward Sermauer I was watching who came from the right side of the line. And he would have been back there pretty close. I mean, he got a really good jump, and then the whistle blew, so we never saw what happened. But now, Patrick Helen will have to go back into his end zone to punt this football away. Still six seconds to go. You know, if you had around three seconds or so, you could maybe run out of the back of the end zone. But now you got to kick it in this situation because yeah. it's too much time. Good snap to Helen, and now another whistle again. An illegal procedure is called against the TSU Tigers again, so they're going to go backwards. Kicking team on the 52. Wow. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. <laughs> you know, and all this happens, right, without any time coming off, so you're still sitting there at six seconds because the ball is not snapped. Umar Yarrow was the guilty party that time for the Tigers. I like this timeout by Texas Southern View, too, right? Hey, let's get our stuff together. Obviously, we've had two issues, right? We can't give away something easy. We've worked too hard to get up in this game 35-7. We just can't give them something easy, right? So let's make sure we handle our positions. And, again, I'm sure he's I'm sure he's going, okay, we got to block, because I think you know they're coming now. Yeah. We thought it was good 10 yards ago. It's yeah, really I mean, good now. <laughs> he started right on the goal line. Now he's going to be on the end line on the back of the end zone. So yeah, all the pressure is going to be on Patrick Helen as he gets set to punt this football away. I noticed last time he was just trying to get the kick off really fast. Got it out of there. Short kick. Fair catch called for and made right at about the 35-yard line. So that's going to do it. Let's see. The official runs in. We have another flag down. Wow. Outside. Defense, number 20, feels decline for the results at the end of the second quarter. Wow. So that takes us to the end of the first half, and for a while, wasn't sure we were going to get there. <laughs> that was five penalties in a row, I believe. <laughs> but we're going to halftime, 35-7. Texas Southern leads Alcorn State.
the Texas Southern Tigers are shocking the Alcorn State Braves 35-7 at the half. But now, for your listening pleasure, time to check out the Ocean of Soul, our halftime band's performers, presented by Pepsi.
Welcome back, everyone. As you can see, 35-7, Texas Southern University, after an outstanding first half, leads Alcorn State. And you got to think, that's the shocker at this point of the weekend in the SWAC. There's no doubt about that. Oh, no question. And again, uh, Texas Southern came out and just absolutely did stuff that's been tough for them all year long is it execute and just play their game and, and not make so many mistakes, right? And, and you can see what's possible when they play like that. And then I think Alcorn really just got shocked. Big plays happened real quick. They got behind. They didn't have their rhythm together. And, and now I think in halftime they're talking about, okay, how are we going to bring things back together? But certainly Texas Southern's come out with some serious firepower today. And we'll have more on the game in just a minute. Yeah. But first, let's take a look at some news and notes from around the SWAC. And the SWAC has announced a new game-changing partnership with Google. The collaboration is dedicated to leveraging Google's Steam platform systems to nurture young college talents, ensuring they have the capabilities required by future workforce in the tech industry. And that will be a quite a collaboration there. And then you can see the SWAC Volleyball Weekly Honors. Always important to get those on the screen. And how about the Southern Jags pulling off the upset of the UNLV Rebels? The Southern Jaguars came away with an impressive 85-71 win over UNLV on Wednesday night, claiming their first win in a non-conference game. So congratulations to the Southern Jaguars. Now, since our game is on Sunday, and that was brought to you by GM, <laughs> by the way, the news and notes, and our scoreboard... This is our game is on Sunday. Let's check out the scoreboard from Saturday, brought to you by Pepsi. Bethune-Cookman with a win over Alabama A&M, 31 to 14, and then you see Alabama State, 21 to 3 over Mississippi Valley, and then that's the big one right there. Prairie View knocking off Southern, 27-21. Yeah, and that opened up things for for what we're seeing today, right? Alcorn now, and I'm sure their coaches reminded we have to win today to hold things in our own accord. And Prairie View A&M now has really locked themselves up where they've got a a guaranteed spot. Yeah, to if Texas Southern hangs on today, it's going to put Alcorn State in a big, big bind. And the final score, 28 zip there. Florida A&M rolling on. And what's coming up in the SWAC, which will explain what we're just talking about. you got Mississippi Valley and Alabama A&M. Alabama State at Prairie View. That could be for everything right there. Yeah, it, it sure in the could. West, in the West. Yeah, Prairie View A&M just has to handle their business. And then Alcorn, look at them. They've yeah. got to go to Jackson State, who's been playing better and better and better and handling their business. So, I mean, those are tough, tough games to do. And then Arkansas Pine Bluff at Texas Southern and Bethune-Cookman at Florida A&M to wrap things up. Our game, 35-7 to at the half. We'll be right back with more.
The rain is starting to come down here at Shell Energy Stadium, but it will not rain on the Texas Southern Tigers parade right now. They lead Alcorn 35-7 to thanks to two touchdowns by Ladarius Owens. We'll be right back with more. We're at the half. The rain is picking up a little steam here at Shell Energy Stadium in downtown Houston, Texas. Butch Alcindor along with Jorge Vargas. And as you can see on your screen, 35-7 Texas Southern leads Alcorn State as we get set to start the third quarter. But first, a couple of highlights from the first half. And there was an exciting first half. How about this? Jace Wilson cranking one out 67 yards right there to Trenton Leary, putting the Tigers from TSU out in front first. And then they come right back to Quay Davis on the next possession. And Davis breaks one for a big game for Texas Southern as they get it all the way down in the red zone. And then how about this? Ladarius Owens from 20 yards out, weaving and bobbing, and he goes in for the touchdown. 14-zip Texas Southern. But you can't throw it any better than that. How about that? Aaron Allen with the pass to number eight. T. Adams, and that would set up Jarvion Howard 
for the touchdown. And then this was a big break for Texas Southern. Hakeem McNair with a muff on the punt. The Tigers recover, and it would lead to this. Some razzle-dazzle. Check out Leary as he tosses it in the end zone to King Blanton for the touchdown. That kind of first half for Texas Southern. But Aaron Allen would not give up. A beautiful strike right there to Hunt. A big play for the Braves. And then on the other side... We saw the Tigers just put the ball on the ground, and they're making big plays as Owens takes it in for that final touchdown as we take a look at the stats from the first half. Wow, I mean, 319 total yards by Texas Southern, 245 in the air. That's almost double what they do in a game. Uh, just absolutely uh, flawless from them in the, in the air. Their rushing's just 74. Just effective. They've... I think they're playing loose and they're and they're executing, which is the big, big scheme of them. I mean, they're just getting things done. And again, David Marsh is just allowing his players to make plays. And again, the penalty bug hasn't been him as much, and they've held on to the ball. Quickly, what do you think Fred McNair told his team at the half? I think he told them, "Hey guys, you just need to concentrate. We we need to forget about the scoreboard. Quit looking up at the scoreboard, and let's start executing like we play football." Right? I think it's one of those things. He says. Alcorn can't beat Alcorn, right? And right now we're beating ourselves. And I think that's where they're going to come out and say, just quit looking at the scoreboard. Let's keep chopping wood. And let's figure out where we are when we start that fourth quarter. So the Alcorn Braves will get the first bite of this apple to start the second half as they will have the football. As you can see, the offensive team on the sideline as they jog on behind Aaron Allen. By the way, the two quarterbacks in this game... Jace Wilson and Aaron Allen were actually high school teammates at Ridge Point High School right outside of Houston. So they have a lot in common. And you see Allen right here starting off with a handoff to Howard. And Howard's going to be dropped in the backfield. A nice play over there by number 38, Josiah Hartman, getting in the backfield for that stop. That's a second big tackle by Hartman. And again, that is not an easy uh, thing to do is to get him by the legs and, and get him down like that. What a huge, huge play. So a loss, no less. Second down, loss of two on the play. Allen's going to have to throw it in the rain, and he gets it to Hunt, and Hunt bobbled it a little bit, and let's see what they call, because he had trouble getting a grip on that football, and now it's going to be ruled an incomplete pass as you take another look. Yeah, right there. Yeah, he never really had full full control of that ball. I think that's a great call. How much of a factor will the weather be here in the second half? You saw it right there playing a, yeah. a, a role right there on that pass. Yeah, I mean, usually TV you can't see it as much, right, with the rain like that, but it's a good, steady rain of some pretty good-sized drops. So it's going to be tough uh, to catch the ball and make sure you handle the ball well. Third and 12 for Aaron Allen. And the Alcorn offense, pressure, fires near the sideline, and that's a little too hot for Tavarius Griffin. Truck got his hands on that, but under the conditions, that's going to be a tough ball to catch. And you know, Javias Williams again, number 24 for Texas Southern. He comes, they line him up in just any position, and he does a great job of disguising when he's coming. There's that rain. And if you're familiar with Houston rain, it's pretty, it's pretty strong when it comes, and it's it's coming, but Javias Williams, I just he does an excellent job of disguising. And then when he comes, there's no indecision. He has great explosion. He gets there. Yeah, three sacks on the season for Williams. As Alcorn will punt the football away. Good punt. Leary's going to let it drop. It goes sideways and is going to be touched down near the 40-yard line. So Texas Southern will get their first shot with the ball resting right at the 40-yard line. So we talked about what Fred McNair may have said to his team. What do you think was happening in the other locker room with Clarence McKinney? I think Coach Clarence McKinney says, you know, you got to keep doing what you're doing, but how do you handle success, gentlemen? You know, when we've had success in the, in the for a quarter or two quarters, we've, we've had quarters that just unravel it. Let's not unravel. Let's keep doing what we're doing. Let's execute. Keep your head in the game and handle success. How talented was that Ridge Point High School team? <laughs> that had both these guys playing quarterback. I mean, or whatever Wilson played in high school, but there's two talented guys on the same team. So first and 10 for the Tigers. Wilson's going to throw it, and he has his man, and it's caught by Leary, and he's going to be dropped and game tackled at the 40-yard line. Good job by Trenton Leary to hang on to the football. Keep your head about you. You can't get... Uh... 
And again, this is where you got to keep your head and execute and keep your mind on the game. You start letting getting sidetracked or, or bitten into a bad play. You can't you can't allow that to happen. Big play right there by Jace Wilson. Completes it to Trenton Leary. First and ten for the Texas Southern Tigers. Wilson to Owens, and Owens gets away from one would-be tackler, and then Owens is finally going to be. There were just white shirts everywhere. He couldn't dodge them all, and he's going to be dropped for a loss on the play. Yeah, you, you, can't, uh, you can't get by all of that. And that was the one time I think the offensive line kind of uh, allowed way too much uh, to go through right there. A lot of penetration in the backfield by the Braves. It's going to bring up a second now, and it's second and 11 to go for Texas Southern. Give us to Owens, and Owens takes his time, picks his hold. He's going to have some yards on the play. He's going to bring up third down for the TSU Tigers with the ball on the Alcorn State side of the field. Very patient run right there, right? I mean, you, you, you have a lot of action going on, and then you kind of see real delayed, delayed draw is kind of what I'd call that one. Uh, and Owens was very calm just sitting in there. And, again, he, he does a great job of uh, just getting every yard he can out of a play. So third down for Jace Wilson. Wilson fires, and it's caught by Ian Means. And let's see where they put this one down. They're going to mark it down, and it looks like it's going to be fourth and short. Really short, as we take a look at the quarterback comparison on the screen right there. Yeah, 12 and 15. Chase Wilson there. Aaron, Aaron Allen, 9, 10 of 19, just 230 yards. I think the yardage for Chase is a little bit off right there. Passing. So Tigers trying to go quickly here. Fourth down. Fourth and a long yard, and Wilson may be just trying to draw him off sides. No, he snaps it. Fakes it to Owens. Wilson keeps, and boy, he's going to be extremely close. This one will definitely depend on the mark. Good job by Wilson, but he didn't get there. He didn't get it. The officials can see it clearly from the sideline, and it's a huge stop by the Alcorn State defense on fourth down. The yeah. Braves, just to give you some idea of what's going on today, Steve McNair's team, the defensive team, has only given up 19.8 points per game. And Texas Southern put 35 on the board in the first half. Exactly. You know, he. it was a very aggressive conversation. Earlier I said, I was just saying what he was saying, but trust me, it was intensity for sure. So the Braves will go back on offense behind Aaron Allen. And again, Texas Southern usually allows around... 25 or 27 yard, uh, points a game. Goes back to the running game to Nico Duffy and not much there for Nico. And again, you know, with, with the, the Braves being behind, obviously the weather is, is tougher on them because they're going to have to get the ball in the air and find a way to get big plays. And, and Texas Southern can certainly just let that clock keep rolling and just maintain the ball and on their drives get rolled back to what you were asking about tsu giving up 35 points a game so their defense really doing a good job this afternoon yeah i think it started in the interior with pippins uh, certainly him and noel and then of course jacob williams is just everywhere uh, getting things done and then and then the defensive coordinator everett todd who came over from grambling brought a lot of experience with him to Texas Southern. It's his first year as a defensive coordinator, and one of the things Clarence McKinney pointed out was his defensive team has really gotten better and better as the season has gone on. So now, a huge third down here for Alcorn State because they are going to run out of possessions if they don't start cashing some in. So a pass underneath to Howard. Howard is going to be caught and dropped in an excellent open field tackle there by Josiah Hardman, and we've called out his name a few times, and that's what he's excelled at today, making that tackle I'll in the open what, field. tell you what, he can coach, coach, coach tackling when he, if he decides to do anything else because he does an awesome job of getting those legs and bringing someone down. I mean, that's what, his third or fourth, I think, we've, we've called today that, that's been open field, good tackles against an incredibly hard person to bring down. He's done a great job doing that as Kenny Lee Pham comes on to punt it. 
as the rain has slacked off a little bit, still coming down, not quite as hard. Bam gets the kick away. It's going to be short, but it takes an Alcorn State bounce. And it's going to be set there. So TSU will start first and 10 from their 26-yard line. Tigers out in front, 35-7. to We'll be right back in just a minute. On their hands. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the falling hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School. We're powered by purpose. Some college players give it their all. But when I say player, I don't mean the ones with the ball. I mean the ones that play drums, the brass, the woodwinds. These players bring excitement to the stadium. Because for them, halftime isn't a break. It's game time. Pepsi is a proud supporter of HBCU students. Pepsi and HBCUs, that's what I like. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the falling hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Welcome back to Shell Energy Stadium. The Tigers from Texas Southern with the football on offense. Jace Wilson goes to the screen the opposite way to the wide receiver. And a good reaction right there from the Alcorn State Braves. Maybe two yards on the pickup by Quay Davis. Yeah, but Texas Southern has done a, a they know that Alcorn is a very aggressive defense, right? So what do you do? Misdirection works really well. In that particular play, they had two directional changes before they got rid of the ball, and you could tell Alcorn's moving all around. They did a good job of recovering. So Jace Wilson, who's gone all the way at quarterback, rolling to his right, throws back inside, but Blanton stepped out of bounds and came back in bounds to make that catch. So that's not going to count. No. He was clearly out of bounds and uh, stepped out of bounds, but he did come back and make the catch. Just lost his awareness where he was on the football field. Well, we saw one the other day. Remember, he got tipped, and then uh, he came back in, but because it got tipped, he was able to catch the ball. This one, no one tipped it. You can touch him. Offense number three. Receiver stepped out of bounds and came back in with his first touch the ball. Hills declined. It's also the plate. Third down. So it's third down coming up as you take another look. Yeah, you can see he's still basically coming back in as that ball right as he catches it. Third down now for the TSU Tigers. Call it third and seven. Tigers have three receivers to Wilson's right. He's looking that way. Flowers over the middle and a great catch by King Blanton. Wilson actually had a little extra velocity on that one. Stuck it in Blanton's chest. And it's a first down for the Tigers. Yeah, watch King Blanton come back. Watch his hands go out first and how strong his hands are right there. You see how he just kept it squeezed despite getting that was an excellent catch. Tigers with a first down, and they come back to Ladarius Owens. Stops and starts. Still on his feet. Owens tiptoeing down the sidelines, and that's just a little picture of what he's capable of. 
you, how do you Central, become the, yeah, how do you away. become the leader of the SWAC in yeah. Russia? <laughs> you do stuff like this. And again, he finds the edge, a little stop right there, and how much he accelerates again, finds the edge and just tiptoes down the sidelines. They'll back it up a little bit. Looks like his foot went out a little bit before where we thought, but still a great job. Yeah, he's done a fine job of running the football today for wow, Texas Southern. Wow, they backed Southern. it way up, Butch. Look. I know. <laughs> wow. So it wasn't as fine. <laughs> yeah. It's going to have to come back. Owens, 14 carries in this game for 90 yards. Cut that, make it, check it, make it 81 net yards. If we have whistles again, and they're trying to see who jumped this time. But 15 carries, 81 net yards for Ladarius Owens so far in this ball game. Against Bailey, number 44, I think All he start. started it. Offense. Oh, they get well, Five yard penalty. Remains second down. So now the Tigers are going in the wrong direction. Those numbers on Owens, the 90, the 81 yards, and he has two touchdowns to go with that. Jace Wilson, 16 of 20 for 273 and a touchdown. Whew. A big game today for Jace Wilson from Texas Southern University. Tigers now with second and long. Give it to Owens again. And number 43, Stamarian Edwards is right there to meet him in the hole. This game's starting to get a little chippy down there. We see helmets on the ground and a little pushing and shoving going on. Well, look, Alcorn knows what's at stake here. I mean, they they understand, and I'm sure, you know, part of that halftime speech is as well. Look, gentlemen, everything's in front of you. It's getting ready to be behind you if you don't start making some plays. Stamarian Edwards came into this game with 61 tackles, 2.5 sacks. So now third down for the Tigers from Texas Southern University. They give it to Owens inside. Owens has some room. And Owens dives. And, boy, he made it close. Owens thinks he got the first down. We'll see what the officials say <laughs> because they've been marking short today. <laughs> yeah, it's two yards short. Yeah. But what a what a... He made something look impossible and almost got there. Just couldn't get there much. He slid towards the first down, but just didn't make it. Good call by David Marsh on third and long. Safe play for the TSU Tigers. Didn't make the first down. Came up short. So now they will call on Patrick Helen to punt the football away. Block was on. They didn't get it, though. It's a short kick. And it goes end over end, and it's finally going to be touched down at about the 14-yard line. A little extracurricular activity going on, and here comes the laundry yeah, over there on the sideline. We are going to want to see that one more time. I mean, it, it was an absolute target if I've ever seen one. Uh, they're just waiting for the ball to go down. I don't know, guys, if we can... Uh, But you have the TSU Tigers, you know, waiting just to down the ball. And then uh, I was trying to catch his number uh, from the Braves, who just came flying in there and just unloaded on an unexpected player. Well, I bet Jarvis Walker has his number. And so we're going to hear from Jarvis in just a second. But you're right. It's, it's going to be a, a big penalty there. Well, I think it's number 46. He's walking to the locker room right now for, for the Braves. He's just taking himself out of the game, number 46. Uh, Trevor James, linebacker from the Braves. Again, he just came out of absolute nowhere and just unloaded on an un unexpected player. That's certainly targeted. Here we go. We'll get a look at it right here. And again, watch. He just unloads head-to-head -head to on him as well. And that's, that's number zero. That's... that's and Howard did that? Wow. I mean, that's Jarvie and Howard. I'm confused. Then why Trevor James went to the locker room. But, I mean, that that's targeting. At his best, I don't want to... Well, let's hear from Jarvis Walker. After play, personal foul 
unnecessary roughness. Number eight, receiving team. The penalty wouldn't be forced half the distance to the goal. Also after the play, a sportsmanlike conduct, number 46, receiving team. He's disqualified. The penalty would be also half the distance to the goal. First down, Alcorn. Boy, that was a lot to unpack there. The first part of it was against Ja'Cory Benjamin from Texas Southern. And then, he, like you said, he mentioned it. it so they allowed, at the end of the day, they allowed the, the Jarvie and Howard hit. They had no problem with that. It was a repercussion right after that hit of the Tigers going after Howard. I mean, that's the foul. That's the target to me. And then I guess it's... Well, I don't even see a number eight over there. They must have been he, 82 or he, 82. He said uh, number eight, Ja'Cory Benjamin, but he wasn't over there, so... It must have been 82, Aaron Powell, who re re retaliated just a bit when Howard made the hit. But I, I, that is... Uh, that right there is the target. I, I, I think later on they're going to take a look at that, and they're going to be... Uh, uh, that's the flag. Well, that's going to put the Braves... Either way you look at it, it's going to put the Braves in a deep hole with the football resting around the three-yard line. So Fred McNair is not going to be happy about that. You can bet you can take that to the house. Yeah, no, no, no doubt about that. And, again, you got to keep your composure no matter what's going on. But looks like they're going to go look at some video. I think they... Well, if nothing else, to get some of the numbers straight and find yeah, out who actually, who actually did what. 100%. 100%. It looks like to me, again... Jarvin Howard would have a, a targeted hit. which would... So while they sort it out, we're going to pause for a timeout here in the booth. It's still 35-7, Texas Southern out in front. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Shell Energy Stadium, where our referee Jarvis Walker still trying to sort things out down on the sideline. Turned on his mic. I thought he had something for us, but no, not, not yet. Well, I think they're just going to retrace things and take a good look and make sure they have the right numbers, the right players of what they're trying to do. Let's take another look at that and see exactly what happened and who was involved, which is more important. And again, that's a defensive player getting hit head to head. Right? And again, I get the whistle had not blown yet because they had not 
killed the ball, but that that's the essence of defensive player, defenseless player. Well, they're taking a good long look, so I hope he was writing this stuff down so when he starts to reiterate, he can, <laughs> we'll just, let him he can go down the list. I'm, I'm, Here we go. I know, I think what I saw, but... After further review, the foul was actually on number zero. Number zero also committed personal foul for targeting. That penalty has already been enforced. Therefore, it'll be first down to ten. Alcorn's ball, number zero, is disqualified. So there you have it. And he'll be out of the game for the Alcorn State Braves. And I think, you know what, that, that the crew did a fantastic job of going back, making sure they had everything right. And uh, somehow they must have had confusion between 46 and 0, uh, and now they've got. And so there, it's, it was the linebacker. It was not Jarvion Howard. There are two, let me, I guess we should clarify that, two number zeros on the Alcorn State team. On our roster, we only had Jarvion Howard, but apparently there's a linebacker also with that number, and he's the one who's been ejected from the game. So you know, it's a good news, bad news thing for Alcorn State. The bad news is obviously you got the ball right out off of your goal line. You got penalized. Good news is you get to keep Jarvion Howard, yes. and he still can be a weapon in this ball game. Well, I think the refs are checking to make sure that that's the zero they're talking about. I'm seeing them on the sideline, so we'll see. The player of Fule is the one that's qualified. The defensive player zero. Okay, they <laughs> we have some TSU fans that are close yeah. to our earring that are, uh, are letting the refs know <laughs> to get things done. <laughs> well, they, they said you guys are taking too long, basically, but not quite that language. Ball is loose, picked up by Howard. Snap was dropped by Allen, and Howard picked up the loose ball. So and again, that, that could have been real disaster yes. right there. In a game like this, exactly. That, that, that's what, what right now uh, Alcorn is fighting against right now. I mean, it's just totally losing your cool and, and losing your concentration and starting to let things just unravel. Second down now coming up for the Braves. They're in the shadow of their own goal line. In fact, Allen's standing in his end zone. Turns, gives it quickly to Howard. Howard makes a great step just to get out of the end zone, and he's going to pick up a couple of yards, but a really sweet move by Howard just to keep from being tackled in the end zone. Yeah, and I can't say enough about the pressure that t the Texas Southern defensive line are getting pressure and shooting gaps. I mean, they're doing a he, he is not allowed to wind up and roll, and they're getting him before he gets ahead of steam. Howard came into this ball game with 658 yards rushing, and five touchdowns, but now he and the offense are looking at a third and seven to keep this drive going. Allen to throw it. Fires a strike. Has his man. That's a first down to Tiberius Adams, who hauled it in. T. Adams with a nice catch, his second in the ball game. And again, they just send him on the middle, and he steps right up and then fires that ball right at the perfect pass. Boy, Texas Southern is relentless with that blitz. Javias Williams again in the backfield. First down now. Allen flies it out to Howard, who tried to truck somebody out there. He goes down. That was our friend Josiah again making another tough tackle. Hardman is just Josiah. You're right. Watch him. Boom. He takes it. But he's going down. You know, I mean, tackle doesn't have to be pretty. That's what, fourth or fifth, I guess, now? Yeah, he's, he's made some really, really big plays for the Tigers today. Second and six now for the Braves. Allen with a lot of time. Floats it over the middle, has his man. It's Williams, and Williams is going to be down at about the 46-yard line. First and ten for Alcorn State. Yeah, I think I told you off camera, it's amazing to me how they haven't tried the middle of the field much, and neither team has. And again, he's got plenty of room right there. If he had kept his feet, that would have been a much bigger play. Anthony Williams on the catch, the transfer from Akron. 
He's a junior out of Chicago. Made a nice catch right there. First down for the Braves. Allen again cranks it, and it's almost picked off by the Tigers' defense. Perry Wells did a great job breaking back on that football, did everything but make the catch. Yeah, he did. You look at, you could just see his disgust on his face right now. But he reads it and just jumps and does a great job of avoiding the receiver and using that right arm, stretches around him. Great, great technique. We're down to three minutes to go. Here in the third quarter, Texas Southern. No scoring here in the second half so far. 35-7, that was our halftime score. Allen again. Trying to crank it out, but he's under pressure. He just has to throw it away. He had Jarvion Howard wide open, but he didn't have the opportunity to see him. It was number 72, putting a lot of the pressure. Booker back there, getting in his face. Yeah, Rick Brian Booker, uh, 6'4", 322. Redshirt freshman out of Dallas, Lake Ridge. He was coming. <laughs> he was not stopping. I was a little bit nervous he was going to have roughing the passer because he, he kind of took him down, but he didn't land on him. But when yeah. you get there, you, you want some, some pain. <laughs> Booker actually came in as an offensive lineman and was moved to the defensive line, and, boy, he hasn't missed a beat. Has not missed a beat. Third and ten now for the Alcorn State Braves. Pressure on Allen, tipped up by Williams and almost intercepted by Jacob Williams. So Jacob Williams getting back into that zone, dropped right into his spot and almost came away with the interception. And guess who came flying through there? Javias. Look at that. Boom. And again, he got hit by two different players, but Javias just comes out of every single place. He sees a gap, and I don't know if he's just got green light whenever you want to go, go, son. But he goes, and he gets there. Well, Alcorn State, as you see, Allen limping off the field a little bit. Might have been shaken up there. It looked like he was hit after he threw the football. But we're approaching the point in the game, as you see Pham getting set to punt it away, where they may not have the opportunity to punt much after this one. That one may have been tipped. It goes straight up in the air, and it takes a Texas Southern bounce. And we have whistles on the field there as they're trying to keep the players separated there. So TSU will have the football when we come back. We're going to pause for a timeout. Still 35-7, Texas Southern. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the falling hydration levels. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Doritos, Doritos, I saw that black in 2021 to help fuel the initiatives of black leaders seeking to drive real change. And this year, Doritos Solid Black is welcoming 16 new change makers to the program. We are Solid Black. Shell Energy Stadium in downtown Houston. And as you can see on our scoreboard, yes, that is the correct score. Texas Southern have hitting on all cylinders today. They lead Alcorn State 35-7. to We talked a little bit earlier about why this game is so important because Alcorn State and Prairie View A&M are still fighting it out for that championship in the West. Yeah, I'll tell you that. And, and I think I heard a cheer coming up from Prairie View A&M up 290 about uh, four, 50 minutes north uh, of uh, uh, of Houston. Uh, you don't often have the <laughs> Prairie View A&M pulling for TSU, but uh, today they're sure, surely uh, uh, liking the score they're looking at today. But a lot on the line. And, and uh, the Braves are going to run out of time if they don't make something big happen soon. Tigers operating first and 10 right now. Ball looks like it's placed on the 39-yard line. Chase Wilson has gone all the way at quarterback. 
Long snap count before he gives it to Owens, and a big hole for Owens. And Owens is just a foot race now. Owens is caught from behind and dropped at about the 29-yard line. But there goes that man again, Ladarius Owens, ripping off a big run. And that'll put him over 100 if, uh, if I'm pretty close there. Okay. That was a blast. That should put him way over 100, a big run by Owens. Huge first down. 37 yards on the carry by Ladarius Owens. Now we have Wilson looking to throw. Has a man by himself. It is Leary. And Leary does a great job of coming back to make sure he caught the football. You know, there's a tendency to run for the end zone because you're all alone. But Leary made sure he made the catch. So it's another first down for the Tigers, and they're knocking on the door. Boy, Leary, 122 yards receiving today. And you're right. The great adjustment there to come back and just read the ball. And, again, the ball wasn't a nice little spiral, so good catch there as well. First and goal to go now for the TSU offense. As Wilson have gotten down here with two big plays, a run by Ladarius Owens and that pass to Leary. So Wilson gives it back to Owens. Owens at the five. He's going to be knocked down at about the four-yard line. So just, just another one of those days for Ladarius Owens. I mean, that's the kind of year he's been having. Oh, I, I, when I saw a 6.9 a carry, I was like, wow, that, that, that is just crazy. And uh, today he's got 7.2 right now. Tigers go quickly. They're back up at the line of scrimmage. Leary comes in motion. Now he reverses his field. Give us to Owens again. And this time the Braves stuffed that one out. Did yeah, a good job. We're in the same play, two plays in a row. This time they were like, no, not, not again. But boy, Owens, just special player. 136 net yards right now. 7.2 a carry. 136 yards today. He came in needing 176 to be the all-time rusher in TSU history. So he may get that before we go home today because we're still in the third quarter. So now, timeout called by Texas Southern University. As you see, Ladarius Owens walking over to the sidelines. And it, it, we can just go on and on about the season this young man is, have, is having. He went over 2,000 yards in his career. You know, just, just doing a sensational job. He's a senior from Alvin, Texas. Went to Manville High School. Yeah, so he's from this area. He knows the history of Texas Southern. You know, he chose to come here. I mean, and he's just done a remarkable job. And he's done it in so many ways. I mean, he just a, a, he's a, that unique kind of back that has the power, speed, and also quick feet, right? I mean, it's not just a power back. He's a little bit of everything. Uh, and at times, I mean, he really, they've dumped the ball to him in the passing game at certain games and have done a lot. Look, 20 carries, 135 yards, uh, 6.7, two touchdowns on the day. And you know he's thinking, I need three today. <laughs> when you go 6.7 a carry, I mean, that makes life a lot easier for your quarterback. And that's what's happening today for Jace Wilson. And he appreciated it. And, and Wilson is also having maybe his best day of the season so far today. So third down for the Tigers now. Third and goal to go for TSU. They put Leary in motion. Snap to Wilson. Floats it into the end zone, and it's going to be an incompleted pass. A lot of contact over there in the corner, but so far no flag from the officials. He was trying to hit Quay Davis in the corner with that one. Wow, Lorenzo Garcia was all over him. Look at him just grabbing him before that ball ever gets there, and no flag uh, comes flying out. If this game was a lot closer, that would be a whole lot more <laughs> imperative. Well, there's a lot of contact on that play, no doubt about that. So that will bring on the kicker for the Texas Southern Tigers, Gustavo Romero today. He's one for three on this season so far. 24 yards on the attempt. And he drilled it. So the Tigers have put three more on the board and have increased their lead to 38 to 7 with 26 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Yeah, that was a tough hold right there because that, uh, that snap was wide. The holder did a great job of catching it wide, getting it back down. 
Uh, so that was a that was a great great kick right there for them. Well, you know, and look at the conditions. In the rainy conditions, yeah. he did a good job of holding that football. Yeah, you mentioned Jace Wilson a minute ago. 17 of 22, 77 percent pass completion, 288 yards of touchdown. That is a really really fine day for him. This best day of his career, I believe. Well, and, and we've been seeing it, and we've said the, the scoring drive for Texas Southern before they had the 24-yard field goal, six plays, 55 yards, and it took them two minutes and 14 seconds before Gustavo Romero drilled the 24-yard field goal. Yeah, now for Alcorn, Butch, it's going to be about, they've got to find something special, something big has to happen, right? And really, at this point, they need a few big things to happen, right? Defensively, they need some kind of turnover, and offensively, they need some quick pops. Well, right now, there's not enough possessions left in this game unless unless you get some turnovers, and that's what they're going to have to shoot for. Yeah. So that one goes through the end zone, and the Braves will start first and 10 from their 25-yard line. And I think, really, what also needs to happen is Texas Southern, and you can tell there's a lot of jaw jacking now, war going on as things going, but I think what the players need to do is control themselves, and a lot of, you know, coaches always talk about how do you handle success and what do you do for success. And I think that's right now, look, we're having a great game. You guys are playing fantastic. Let's keep your cooler heads. Don't give up some easy, you know, unsportsmanlike conduct of 15 yards. Hang on to the ball. Let's still execute our plays. Let's close it out properly. Let's not get sloppy where they start to think they have hope. This will be a really big test for Texas Southern down the stretch because they have not closed the deal this year. And this is an opportunity for them to, they have a lead, 38-7, to seven, put this one to bed and take it home. So we'll see how they're able to do that. They've had some games this year in overtime and other aspects where they have not been able to do that. But the defense is playing extremely well today behind defensive coordinator Everett Todd. And it's taken them a little bit of time. To get things straight on the field. And now we're ready to go. First and ten for the Braves. Allen pass near the sideline. It's complete. And he steps out of bounds as he hits his receiver over there. That's Malik Rogers. And he's going to have a gain of about six on the play for the Braves. Rogers is a junior, 5'10, 170 pounder, who transferred in from Tulsa. Been one of their better receivers this season. So second and short. Allen looking to dump it off and is too high for Nico Duffy. And I think Gabe Smith, Butch, got his hand on that and kind of changed that direction the last second, which made that ball float just a little bit. We're going to go to a break now, take a timeout as we come to the end of the third quarter. TSU Tigers out in front, 38 to seven.
You know, what do you do at a rainy football game when you forget your umbrella? You adjust. You make do with what you have, and when That's your team's right. winning, it's much easier. <laughs> Allcorn State with the football. Flag is down. Pass is complete right at the stick. Should be a first down for the Braves. That was Tyron Warren on the catch, the freshman, but there was a flag drop. Offside. Defense. Number 33 is in the zone at the time to snap. The pills decline. There's also the play of first down. And they turn that one down because they got a first down on the play. So the Braves start the fourth quarter off with a pass for a first down. You know, we've called Javias Williams' name out, number 24, for TSU quite a bit. He came flying in there that time, and he got leveled. And he just jumped right back up. I was like, wow, that, that's impressive. He is tough. Another first down for the Braves. Allen has to spin out of trouble. Fires downfield, and it's caught. Nice catch there by the Braves. So good job by Aaron Allen. And once again, that is Malik Rogers coming up with a nice catch. But an even better throw by Allen. I thought Rogers looked like he thought he was going to get hit because he kind of paused once he caught the ball. Great throw moving to his left. Watch, he, 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 he thinks he's going to get hit, and then he realizes I'm still up. <laughs> I'm not sure who he was throwing to there, but it was <laughs> Rodgers who made the catch. He might have been going down the sideline with that. Great play for the Braves. First and ten. Allen gets set. Heaves it for Rodgers again, and he just missed him. Would have been a touchdown for Alcorn State. Rodgers going to need some oxygen after that one because he landed flat on his back, and he's going to the sidelines. When you stretch out like that and you've got everything going and you're flying, watch him. Watch him here in the replay. He's stretching, and right there, and then he lands on that back. All that air in his body just went flying out. Yeah, just a beautiful pass by Aaron Allen, just a tad too long. You know, yeah. Texas Southern, we need to mention that they're playing without Xavier Player, who has two interceptions on the year, and Michael Akins, two of their better Akins. defensive players. So that defense is really kind of picking up the slack. Great catch over there, and there's going to be a foul on Ja'Cory Benjamin. As you see, the flags go down. Nice catch over there by Tyron Warren, the freshman who went way up, pulled that one in, and then the penalty against the Tigers. I hate to belabor this, but Javius Williams again. I don't know if we've got a replay of just staying in the backfield, guys, but this time he came flying in, got rocked again. His helmet goes flying off. He just keeps coming. I mean, I am just impressed with with his desire to get there. And again, he's six foot, 185, red shirt uh, junior out of Dallas Skyline. Number eight, half the distance to the goal, first down. Another look at the penalty here. You see the nice catch, and then the penalty call right oh. there at the face mask. Oh, he got fingers in there, couldn't get him out. It's a good thing he's all right though. That's, that's dangerous. Yeah. So the penalty against Ja'Cory Benjamin. Pass for the end zone in the back of the end zone. It is out. Williams, the closest receiver to that one. Anthony Williams, number one. And Hardman with the coverage there. What you want to do is just get in that hip pocket and ride him out and make him throw it over the top and hopefully they get out the back of the end zone like what just happened. Well, the incomplete pass did stop the clock, so that is good news for Alcorn. 13-20 to go here in the fourth quarter. Pippins just checked in. And another flag. He couldn't get that one snapped off on time. So the whistles blow quickly. Offside with contact, number 72, defense. Five-yard penalty remains second You know, what, if I'm Clarence McKinney right now, you know, you never want to waste the time out on this, but I've said, fellas, we're not going out like this. We're going to stop the stupid penalties. We're going to have to do better than that because this is something that has plagued them the whole year, mm -hmm. and this is an opportunity today, and Alcorn State's not going to roll over. They're not going to quit. They're going to play for the next 13-20, yep. uh, and now they're knocking on the door again. Second down after the penalty. Allen rolling to his right. Passes to the end zone, and it's off the fingertips. 
It's a little strong on that pass. He was trying to hit the freshman again. That is Tyron Warren, who could not bring that one in there. You see better shot of the rain falling right there. Yeah, I think it's Canary Simmons right on the back end of that, driving him out too far to the outside. But overall, the defensive backs for TSU have played a really good game. But, you know, I know that when Allen looks back at the game, he's going to say, man, there are several things I've missed that I, I could have connected on would have changed this, this game. He's trying to hit the freshman who's actually come on in coming weeks. Tyron Warren has been a big receiver. Allen passed this low, tried to get it to Williams on the run, but it's tough to grip that football in the conditions out there on the field. It's Josiah Hardman again on, on, on the defense. Hardman on the play, and here comes the kicking unit now on fourth down. Noah Kiani comes out to try to add, put three on the board for the Braves. Maybe they feel like we just got to get off the seven. The seven is not, not lucky this time. <laughs> got to get past that. Maybe when things will start rolling. Keone, who's the SWAC special team player of the week. 11 of 14 on the year. Kicks away. And he drilled it. So Noah Kiani puts three on the board for the Braves. The scoreboard is wrong because they put it, they gave it to Texas Southern, but we know what the score is. 38 to 10. The Tigers on front. We'll be right back. They're all. But when I say player, I don't mean the ones with the ball. I mean the ones that play drums, the brass, the woodwinds. These players bring excitement to the stadium because for them, halftime isn't a break. It's game time. Pepsi is a proud supporter of HBCU students. Pepsi and HBCUs, that's what I like. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Doritos created Solid Black in 2021 to help fuel the initiatives of black leaders seeking to drive real change. And this year, Doritos Solid Black is welcoming 16 new change makers to the program. We are Solid Black. Huge play coming up. Oh, my goodness. Talking about dropping the ball. I got the score. <laughs> Tostitos Hardy Dippers. In 1920, an athletic league was formed and slowly became one of the leading sports associations in the world of collegiate athletics, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Today, the SWAC is looking towards the next century, growing, supporting, and transforming our intercollegiate sports activities for student athletes and promoting academic excellence. Each SWAC member institution represents a high level of integrity and sportsmanship. We are the SWAC, building champions for life. And as you see, the Braves head coach, Fred McNair, there. His team just put three points on the board. Still got a lot of time left in this ball game. That last drive, though, for that field goal, nine plays, 70 yards, and it took two minutes and 17 seconds as they drill the field goal attempt. Good from officially 22 yards for Alcorn State. So it's something to... Now, would you do something drastic here? I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> Would you even try an, an onside kick this early in the second half? Being that T no. TSU went down and scored so quickly last time they had the ball? No, I would not. I may do, since they're lining up for an onside kick, I may just drop one over here on the right yeah. and go chase it. Well, the, the weather conditions would make an onside kick really interesting yeah, no. in this game. Yeah, but I think I'd almost pooch it up over here towards this, this right side here. Well, at some point, you have to start trying to steal some possessions somewhere along the line, and they're going to kick it away. 
Goes all the way back. And it's Owens who chases it down. He calls for the fair catch, and the Tigers will get it on the 25-yard line. Well, that didn't look like much, but I'm telling you, going backwards, yeah. backpedaling as fast as he was and ca- catching that ball, that, that's, that's, well, that's because, pretty dangerous. Because you're looking up, raindrops are hitting you in your, in your uh, eyes as yeah. you look up, so it's not yeah. not a routine thing at all. Yeah, I don't know. I think people just see that and they go, oh, he caught the ball, then we don't. Oh, why did he didn't catch it? That, that's a, a hard catch right there. And again, we'll see what you were just talking about, Butch, is can TSU keep their composure, get a drive here, because you know the Braves are going to try to get them to do something silly or off the mark or, or a penalty of some sort. First and 10 for the Tigers. Going to give it inside, and Owens, and again, he might have gotten back, call it a gain of one. Looked like he had trouble getting back to the line of scrimmage, so the Braves are right there to shut that down before it could even get started at that time. I don't even know if they gave him the one. <laughs> Just looking at the spot. Yeah. He got back to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> we'll call it again one. The and then, and then he ran into a stone wall led by number 59 over there. Good to see him back in the game. Devin Dawson. He's had himself a good game. He has been back for a little bit. I meant to mention that. Uh, he's, he's had himself a good solid game. Second and 10 now for Texas Southern. Go back to Owens. And Owens, and there goes the helmet flying by as Santonio Rice made the catch and then lost his helmet all at the same time. Excuse me, made the tackle and lost his helmet at the same time. That shot right there gives you a good idea of how hard the rain is actually coming down. As you see Owens there trying to keep his hands dry because he's got to handle the ball. And again, that's what it's all about. Ball security, don't make any big mistakes, do things that keep the clock moving, and the Tigers will, will walk out victorious. For the Braves, they've got to do the opposite. They've got to make, them, make a play that's just crazy, and they've got to make several now at this point of the game. Third down now for the Tigers from TSU. Jace fires to the outside, and that was a dangerous pass. He was trying to hit his receiver out there, Tavares Achan. But you got to be careful with that ball because that's exactly what you were just talking about. There were two white shirts out there, and he kind of floated that one. So the Tigers, though, will get an opportunity to punt the ball away. I mean, that that's what, what the Braves were looking for because a ball like that thrown from the backside hash all the way across the field like that with – uh, really not enough juice on it. There with two two defenders right by it. That could have been dangerous. Patrick Helen comes on to punt the football away. And deep to return for the Braves, Malik Rogers. He got it away. Line drive kick. Rogers calls for the fair catch. And the Braves will have it up near the 40-yard line. We'll call it the 38-yard line. Our score 38 to 10. We'll be right back.
on and go. Swag Football on ESPN is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sporting goods and outdoor retailer of the SWAC. Home Depot, proud sponsor of the SWAC, and by Nike. I finally get to say this, but Jorge Vargas was dancing in the rain with the TSU band. He's dancing all the time, but that time he was dancing in the rain. So the pass is complete. It's going to pick up about six yards right there for the Braves as they get quickly back to the line of scrimmage. There's Rodgers. He's had a fine game also for Alcorn State. Transfer from Tulsa. Allen spins the ball in his hand. Now he cuts it loose deep, throws a strike, and it's a little too high. He was trying to hit the freshman receiver again, Tyron Warren, because he has the height advantage. He's 6'3", 6 6'4". 6 Perry Wells on the defense, but a good shot. He's going to have to take some shots like that downfield. Yeah, and, and Wells is just 5'7". You talked about the height difference. Yeah. There was pretty considerable height difference, but uh, Wells did a good job. Again, keeping the pressure on him. But I will say this, I like the Brave running slants inside. I think that's been open a lot. They just got to connect. All Corn State looking at a third down and five to keep the drive alive here. Allen has a nice pocket, throws inside, it goes off the fingertips of T. Adams. It would have been a tough catch under the conditions, but he had a shot at it. Yeah, he's mad at himself, and, and he certainly will own up. He should have caught that. I think he was kind of thinking how he was going to land and how he was going to do something with that ball after. Just didn't have the opportunity. So you see T. Adams there, Tavarius Adams. T. Various Adams walking over to the sideline. And now you see the Braves have elected to punt the football back to the Tigers with 11.02 to go in this game. Kenny Lee Pham, we've seen a lot of him today as the punter for the Alcorn State Braves. A lot more than Coach McNair wanted you to see. Gets his kick away. This one lands and it stops right there at the 25-yard line and that is where the Braves... We'll touch it down. So Texas Southern will get the football now. 10.57 to go. And I, I would imagine, even though there's a lot of time, we're going to start seeing a heavy dose of both Darius Owens and Ja'Cory Howard. Yeah, and I was just going to say, I would think they're going to hammer with Howard right now, and he's coming out there first. Uh, he is an absolute load, hard, hard, strong runner, and can run through some people. Well, these conditions are made. For Jacory Howard. Yep. When he's 6'1, 6'2, 225. There's a preseason second team all SWAC selection this year. He's going to get to tilt the rock right here, and he's caught in the backfield and spun down. Good job making that tackle by Robert McDaniel. And again, this is a tough time to run. It's kind of like that part in practice where you. You know, coach says, run the play again. Everybody knows where it's going. <laughs> and you're supposed to make something happen. That, that's the point of the game right now where, where uh, the Braves know the ball's coming. Yeah, and that's that's very true because you're not going to fool anybody at this point. You want to try to get something established on the ground. And it really becomes your offensive line against their defensive line. Mm -hmm. Second and ten now. No gain on that last play by Howard. Howard's going to get another shot at it, and it's stacked up right there. Plenty of white jerseys. Yeah, there's absolutely no room in there at all. Any movement. The fact that he got one yard, I think that was pretty impressive. Malik Gaither, one of the Braves there to make the stop. Now we have a whistle. Time out for an injury. It's an injury. is big number 98. That is Andrew Cole. Who's down on the field? <laughs> you guys can't hear that in the booth, but we're hearing the fans. They're saying first there was number 99, now it's number 98. What y'all? What are you guys doing down there? Yeah, it's just said, get that boy some pickle juice. Let's move on. Uh, good thing he's okay. He got up and walked on his own, own bit. But, uh, 
for our own uh, entertainment here. You know, there, there is nothing in this game that head coach Fred McNair has not seen. And, you know, you, you watch right. Fred over there on the sideline, and his demeanor never changes. I mean, he could be up by 40. You know, he could be down like he is today. You'd never know it by looking at him. He never gives up on his team, and his demeanor remains the same no matter what the situation is on the field. It's just that experience, as we said, entering his eighth season as head coach over at Alcorn State. So third down and nine now for the Texas Southern Tigers. Oh, ball is loose. Got away from Jace Wilson on the snap, but Wilson did the smart thing right there. He just fell, he just fell on it. Did not try to pick it up and make something out of nothing. Co correct. And again, normally you want him to try to pick something. But right there, you just down the ball. Let's punt. Clock keeps moving. That helps you out. Yeah, right there. Look at him. Die for it. So those are the kind of plays that the Braves are hoping happens. Yeah. Right? They just need to recover and find a way. And Texas Southern can't allow those to happen. Well, and that could have been a lot more dangerous right there yeah. because under these conditions, that ball could have easily have squirted away. But a good job by Wilson to get on it. So now the Tigers will have Please to punt it the, uh, back to the Braves. The play clock to 11 seconds. 11 seconds. And then the play clock and the game clock will start on my signal. Run the play clock to 11 seconds. Patrick Helen has gotten a lot of work in here. We've seen him out there a lot kicking the football away. Malik Rogers goes back to return the punt for the Braves. And now we're ready for action. Great snap. Oh, that's going to be rough for the kicker. He was hit as he got the kick away, but he took a shot in the end zone. Helen goes down and then came all of the linen right behind him. He got rocked. Personal foul. Defense, number 28. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That happened quick. Bang, bang. He was the other part of that bang. Uh, looks like Kobe Towns uh, with the hit on him. Got him, got there right at the end. and He could have backed off, it looked like to me. He could have maybe got on the way, but, but he hit him, and that'll give him a first down. Yeah, you're trying to make a big play for your team, and sometimes you get caught in that no man's land, and uh, that time he's going to pay the price for it because that's going to put the TSU offense back on the field with the first and 10. And that's all uh, Coach Clarence McKinney wants to do right now, he wants to keep making first downs and keep that clock moving at this point in the ballgame. Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> anything to keep the clock moving will be just fine with him. I may have to try to get outside instead of going up the middle now. Ball on the 30. Three yard line, and they give it to Owens, and Owens has a hole. Great job by Ladarius Owens. And you see HN kind of getting into it with a couple of the Braves. And that's exactly what the Braves are going to try to do, right? Yeah. They want them to do something that gives them a penalty that changes it, and that's where you have to keep your head and just play the game. They did rule it a first down on that run by Owens. Wow. You know, if you look at the way things went today for Texas Southern, I mean, Clarence McKinney may petition to get a lot of their games played on Sunday. <laughs> he, he may think this worked out pretty good, fellas. Well, I think he said, I told you, young man, I'll have you playing on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> it's this Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> they came into this game as a heavy underdog. Offense. Five-yard pill. Pull a second I don't think they spotted the ball fast enough for them to. Uh. Well, that's what Ladarius Owens was trying to say. He was pointing to that, yeah. but, you know, it's going to cost them five as they back up the TSU Tigers. <laughs> we need to bring her in the booth with us. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of, yeah, I know it's, <laughs> it's probably not loud enough or close enough to our mics for you folks at home to hear it, but we're getting entertained here. It's some really good entertainment here. <laughs> hmm. 
And the Tigers are going to run it again. A big hole for Owens as he turns the corner. Owens over the 30. Owens is down the sideline, and he is gone. Ladarius Owens with a slide into the end zone. And he may have put a bow on this thing right there with that one. As Owens slips around the outside on the sweep, takes it all the way to their house, makes the house call for another Texas Southern touchdown. Does that put him as the top rusher? Uh, let's see what he what he need coming in, Butch. He needed 176 yards. I think he got it. Look at that. I told you they couldn't get anything inside anymore, and then they went outside. And what a successful run that was. Everything collapsed inside. Yeah. And he goes scooping for the touchdown. That was a 62-yard run by Ladarius Owens into the end zone. His third touchdown of the day as we have a bad snap there on the extra point try. We're going to take a timeout now with the Tigers in control, 44-10. to 10. We'll be right back. And that man, number 22, is a very happy young man as he gets a big hug right there for his mom in the stands as she brought her football with her. <laughs> and the reason why they're so happy is because Ladarius Owens has just become the all-time leading rusher in Texas Southern University history. He needed 176 yards coming into this game so far today, 211 yards rushing and three touchdowns, averaging 8.8 .8 yards a carry. What an incredible performance. Yeah, it's awesome. And what better way to, to get the record with a 62-yard run into the end zone. That's just icing on the cake. And, again, you can see how emotionally he was going to the sidelines, uh, hugging his mom. I mean, that's just big. And, and the whole sidelines ripped up. And, again, the, the TSU Tiger faithful just excited. Kickoff goes down to about the 14-yard line, and here comes Williams on the return as he tries to turn the corner, still on his feet, pushed out of bounds at about the 26. Now that last scoring drive, as Ladarius Owens did all the work, he took it 62 yards for the touchdown, but the drive itself, five plays, 75 yards, and it took him three minutes and 45 seconds, and it gave the TSU Tigers a 44-10 lead over Alcorn State with 7.06 to go here in the ball game. And they're still celebrating on the sideline. Yeah, I mean, that's special. You work your, your career, you know, all the work you put in over the time to come make a statement for your university and to be the man on top as a running back. That, that's, that's special. He's on top of the conference and on top of his, his school. And earlier this year, he went over the 2,000-yard uh, rushing mark 
for his career. So he's just getting all kinds of uh, marked uh, records set in this his senior year. And again, you can see the Braves there with the run. I think at this point they're gonna they're gonna try to move the clock along as well, and uh, move on. But this is certainly a tough one for Alcorn. Well, it, it's definitely disappointing. We had second down here and probably nine, but it's disappointing for Fred McNair and the and the Braves. But it's not done yet. I mean, they still can go into that uh, final weekend. They're gonna have to go beat Jackson State, and they're gonna have to hope Prairie View loses. At the They'll end have of the to day, that's where they're at. Prairie View loses to Alabama State which is uh, next weekend. And so the handoff to Howard, and he's met in the hole by Williams. And Jacob Williams continues to impress at his linebacker position for the TSU Tigers. Yeah, but look how hard Jarvie and Howard still runs. I mean, you know, it's one of the, again, like I mentioned earlier uh, from the TSU side, it's like, hey, you know, run right. Everyone, we're going to run right, run the play again, and, that, and that's where they're at. Um and knowing you're going to get teed off on, but you still run extremely hard. This is a tough part of the game for, for truly both teams and certainly all four at this point. We've just gone under the six-minute mark left in the ball game. Third down for the Braves. Allen throws it underneath to Howard. And Howard can't get away. He cannot get away. Guess who that was? Josiah again with a big tackle. Josiah Hardman. Getting the job done with another open field tackle. He must be have been a um, what is it the calf scramble where you you go and you tie the tie the oh, calf the, up. The ca rope calf and, roper, yeah, yeah you rope and rope and tie. Because my gosh, I mean, he gets over there, and that's exactly what it looks like to me. He's able to wrangle the legs real quick and then <laughs> tie it up and stand up and you know raise his hand. I mean, that, that's uh, that's six or seven or whatever tackles he's made like that. That that's a uh, Really, really great, great uh, effort on his part. So Alcorn State will kick it back to the TSU Tigers. Kick hits, and it's going to take a big bounce for the Braves. It's going to go right down to the 20-yard line, and that's where they're going to touch it down. We do have a flag down. And all the Braves are pointing at the Tigers from Texas Southern. So there's a lot of pointing going on down there. We'll see what our officials have to say about this, Mr. Jarvis Walker. Yeah, I think it's Demarion Edwards, number 43, for the Braves was involved. I'm just not sure if the foul happened before he had his... After the play, there are dead ball fouls on both teams. Personal foul, receive the team, number 43. Personal t personal foul, kicking team, number 52. Those fielders will offset. First down at 10 will be played from the dead ball spot. I think he got the right numbers. He just got the wrong team of, of, of who's doing what. It was Edwards for Alcorn and then number 52, which would have been... Uh, Kumar Yarrow for Texas Southern. Time out on the field. So now for, we're going to take this time out. So they have a time out on the field. We'll take one in the booth. We'll be right back. We have a 44-10 game. Texas Southern out in front.
Butch Alcindor and Jorge Vargas here with you at Shell Energy Stadium in downtown Houston, Texas, where the Texas Southern Tigers have a commanding 44 to 10 lead. We have 4:42 to go here in the ball game. Tigers with the football now, and you know they're just going to be working on that clock as much as they can work on the clock. They got the big back in the backfield. That is Ja'Cory Howard. And Howard is caught probably before he even got the handoff. Yeah. He was hit in the backfield. This is one of those strange parts of a game you don't see very often where both teams just want the clock to just finish out, right? I mean, it's like, uh, let's, just, let's just get this going. And again, there's certainly going to be nothing happening inside. I think if they're going to run anything, they got to get it to the outside. They're just trying to get some first downs, keep the clock rolling, and, and end this. Well, Texas Southern has really done it all today. They've done it on the ground. Jace Wilson has had an excellent game also at quarterback. And then he hands off again, and they're going to get that tough yardage inside. So the Braves fighting and clawing to get that football back as we get down to the 346 mark left in this ball game. Texas Southern 502 yards of offense. Pitch. Well, that's that's interesting because when they came in today, that's a lot of offense. But they came in here when they were averaging total offense of 368.6 a game. And now you say we're over 500. They're over 500 <laughs> yards. Yeah. And Howard is tripped up in the backfield, and he won't get back to the line of scrimmage. And the Tigers will have to punt the football back to the Braves. But that's, you know, they've exceeded all of their marks for the year. You look at the rushing average for Texas Southern, 195 a game. That's what they've been excelling at, running the football. They've been averaging 172 passing in the air per game. They ex exceeded that today. The 368 total offensive yards, they've exceeded that. And, of course, they're averaging 23.3 points per game, and you look on the scoreboard, and they have 44 points up on the scoreboard. Yeah, I mean, that's... Kick is away. It's an end-over-end kick, and it's caught by Rodgers. And he's going to have it in really good field position there. So it's time now as we get set... For the Braves to take over the football time to check out our player of the game. Tonight's player of the game presented by Gatorade. And uh, you know who it is by now. Number 22, Ladarius Owens. All he had was three touchdowns, 211 yards rushing. He averaged 8.8 .8 yards a carry. And then he also had a 62-yard tote for a touchdown down the sideline that probably put this game on ice. Yeah, it may have been on double ice or dry ice is what he put it on. It was already in the refrigerator or in the freezer. He just he just towed it down. And, and he, it, excuse me, and he also became the leading rusher in Texas Southern history. Yeah, I mean that, and that was a special moment watching him get, uh, hand the game ball uh, to his mom. And and again, that, that's just that's just special when you do something like that. I think I think any player that comes in an organization wants to leave a mark. That's a huge mark to leave on, on Texas Southern all time leading rusher. Uh, and again, he leads the SWAC, the entire SWAC in rushing, and he certainly will elevate that as well. No one can catch him. Uh, I don't believe on that now. So what a night for him. What a night for Texas Southern. And again, I think the big thing for them is they, they put it all together. They've always said, you know, we've really got some good things that can happen. We've got some good players. If we just take care of, if we just, if we just, today was if we just. We, they did everything right. Braves now trying to just run out the clock. As they gave it to Jacorian Sewell inside. But what did Clarence McKinney tell us this week? He said, this has been the weirdest season that I've ever been involved with. He said, we've had things that have happened to us this year that I've never seen in football before happen on a football field. But today is the one day it all came together and it all worked out. Yeah, I mean, well, the season started with with, with Andrew Body uh, not you know getting injured. I mean... When you have the starting quarterback, and he had so much, you know, what they were going to do. They had the offense wrapped around him, how they were going to do things with him leading the charge, and he's gone. And that was a big adjustment. And then, 
you know, they just had to, to work on the things of, you know, take care of the football and penalties and keeping your head right. I mean, and it all sounds easy, but those are those are things that are hard to get in the environment, in the culture, especially when things get rattled when your head, when your starting quarterback goes out. Yeah. So now we're going to have a fourth down coming up now for the Braves, but just the flip side of what you're saying, on that other sideline, Fred McNair and company now have to rebound. They have to get ready for next week because there's still a possibility that Prairie View might lose, and so they would have an opportunity uh, to still slip in there. So today, everything was in Alcorn State's hands. They determined their own fate. Had they won today and won next week, they would have been the West champions. Now they will have to look for a different route. Yeah, now they got to depend on someone else, and that, that hurts. Uh, that, that's tough. And again, that's a really good football team. They just didn't have it today. And that takes us down to the end of the game. A lot of happy TSU fans here. Our final score is 44 to 10. The TSU Tigers coming up with a big upset over the Alcorn State Braves. We'll be right back in a minute to wrap things up from Shell Energy Stadium. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the falling hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Doritos created Solid Black in 2021 to help fuel the initiatives of black leaders seeking to drive real change. And this year, Doritos Solid Black is welcoming 16 new change makers to the program. We are Solid Black. Talking about dropping the ball. I got the score. <laughs> Tostitos Hardy Dippers. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School. We're powered by purpose. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the fall in hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. They have been close to putting it all together all season long, and today it finally happened for the Texas Southern Tigers. A huge win, 44-10 to over Alcorn State. Some great performances. Ladarius Owens, Jace Wilson, and how about Trenton Leary? All these guys contributed in a big way today. Yeah, and just everybody came out and did what they had to do. They put it all together, kept their heads right, and Texas Southern played a phenomenal football game. Alcorn State, they're licking their wounds, and now they're just going to have to go take their medicine. They're going to have to go uh, beat Jackson State and then hope Prairie Valley and them loses. So, for Jorge Vargas and our entire crew, I'm Butch Alcindor saying so long from Shell Energy Stadium in downtown Houston where the TSU Tigers knocked off the Braves from Alcorn State 44 to 10. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Good night, everybody.